Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. We're here. What's I, up, squishies? Is my lamp? I bumped into my lamp at some point. Like I fixed this this morning, and then it was already. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Woohoo! It's squishing time. It, it's squishing time. That's the it's that's the phrase. Squishing time. I'm wow. very excited about this part. I'm just tired. You know what? I'm not. And I didn't sleep until 3.30 in the morning because of my existential crisis. That is cool. That was a cool move of yours. It's sometimes you got to have an existential crisis. Sometimes you have to. This is your favorite part of the story. Interesting. I'll say this is not you my favorite part of the story. Too? Yeah, Dress Rose is not my favorite part of the story. However, this stretch is insanely iconic. There are so many insanely iconic little panels throughout this that I was realizing when you were talking about what you'd read. I adore all oh no, they already know what I chose as the drawing. Oh yeah, no, it's um it's not a hard guessing game this time. I was reading this and you know what I thought? What what'd you think? Such good stuff. This is like This is a good stretch, isn't it? Post times gets hidden at stride. This is a wicked, wicked arc. And Cora, top drawer. Top drawer. We're getting into it now. Cora, Cora's Cora high, is high top tier. Drawer. Cora's high tier. I hope you have to pet the boy. I hope we're getting into it. I'm 70% of the way in. Didn't you just see that? Yeah, I'm just saying, like, post time skip until now, I feel like doesn't live up to pre time skip. But now you're like, okay, no, Oda's cooking. I get you. I'm very, very, very excited. Esso, who's ready for God Usopp? What? Oh, when yeah. Did that God. happen? Yeah. Uh, we need a quick flashback. Can we add on to the theory list that you believe there are prevalent extant physical deities in the world of One Piece? Yeah, million percent. There just is. All right, we're putting it out there. Gods is real. They're here. Um, and Usopp's not one of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and never will be. I get a purple mushroom streak, for it, yeah. even though, if I'm going to be honest. Purple mushroom for saying Usopp will never be a god. He's He ain't no real god. Although... Um, whether he's a god or not, and everyone wants him to be a god, I can't wait to get into his sniper ripering. Like, that, that shit was epic. Yeah, we got some shit to talk about today. Robin, oh, yeah, to did start. Robin die or did Robin not die? I feel like Robin did something worse than dying. Robin didn't die. Yeah, it was worse. Um, it was, worse. uh, more like she just minorly disappeared. Why well, we gotta be so weird about that? I oh can... my god, a woman only dies when she's forgotten. <gasps> she did oh, die. God. That is not wrong. I mean, come on, but yeah. I'm going to pull it up inside of the colored area. I'm just trying to remember where I started. Oh, look at that. Someone put it up. 732. Thanks. That was very helpful. 732 to 767 what? is the stretch we're working on. We read 732 on the... Yeah, we did. We're still talking about it today, though, because it wasn't part of last time. Literally the most anticlimactic chapter to start on. Yes, we were introduced to Senor Pink live, which is why I liked it as a live ending point, because you got to react to Senor Pink. I hate Senor Pink. Yeah, I don't, still not I don't a give a shit it. if he's hard boiled. I don't. And inside of the um, SBS, somebody was like, ah, what the frickin hell is hard boiled? He's not hard boiled. And then, and then <laughs> Oda was like, well, he's going to get more hard boiled. You just wait. And the person was like, mm, I don't think so. He sucks. Look, you just don't know Senor yet. Also, Oda apologized for making a mistake and calling the Colosseum Greek. And yeah, someone said that in chat last time, too. And here's a very interesting thing he also apologized to in three separate SBSs between this area. Huh? His obsession with boobs. Okay, it, it's coming up a lot at this point because have you... The, the proportions are off the charts. Now, I say, have you seen Viola? But also... I need to explain to you how much worse Viola is in the anime. Really? You cannot conceive of what Viola looks like. And it's not just worse because her boobs are bigger. Oda draws anatomy well. Like, the musculature of the women still makes sense. Like, he understands how the muscles of, like, the chest, back, shoulders, and arms work, right? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. We're going to do both of them. So watch on stream this beautiful comparison. Oh, my God. What what is going yeah. on what's with her forehead yeah no and instead of boobs those are just those are just bowling balls yeah yeah it's um 
You don't think that's like peak art? <clears throat> that's not art. Okay, but how about this one? This other oh, beautiful no. comparison of Viola. <laughs> oh no. Look at that facial expression! Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> oh my god! She looks like a pouty teenager. Oh, what is that? Oh, her face and her... Oh, so Look at bad. her fucking arms, the angle. Oh, it's gross! <laughs> anyway, yeah, a whole bunch of different people in the SBS were like, Hey, Oda, just so you know you're a pervert and you've got a boob problem. And then one person was super upset because they thought that um, the, what's the little douchebag's name again? Who, um, with the heels, the person was like, you know what? I was, I've been waiting for you to do flat chested girls. There's so many other aspects of women that are beautiful. It doesn't need to just be about breasts. Thank you for making is this this person dillinger um a girl and then oda was like oh awkward <laughs> His response. lots of people think that but no he's a dude the person who raised him gave him all these things and i felt so bad for that little girl and i want to say like oda representation man there are a lot of girls out there with small breasts who would like to see themselves inside of this manga so Justice for small boobed girls. I also unironically think that there's a benefit, even if you are a perv for boobs, there's a benefit to having women with small boobs because I was watching Chainsaw Man recently and uh, Himeno, a character in Chainsaw Man who's got like double D cups, uh, comes across looking way bustier in Chainsaw Man than any girl in One Piece feels in One Piece. Because in One Piece, giant boobs are such a given that you write them off, it doesn't mean anything. But in Chainsaw Man, because there are girls with like, a cups or B cups, double D's feel fucking gigantic. I think Yoda is making his boobs less impactful by oversaturating the boob market. And now for something completely different. <laughs> I loved, I loved the little guys in this. They the have been tontadas. Yeah, the tontado have been some of my favorite parts of the story. I just love how we downplay. Like when you first meet them, everybody in it, the villains and other people downplay what their value added is going to be. And they're just, they're so good. Is, is there something in the idea of the Tuntadas as compared to humans being allegorical to most humans in One Piece being compared to Celestial Dragons? Ooh, that's There's something very in there. There's something in there. Being Might seen be as like little pests that aren't worth considering that like, there are deals made with that are manipulative and abusive uh, for the sake of keeping them complacent. That they're given <laughs> like a nice perfunctory and non-meaningful representation. You know that this is going to be a really great stream when you're using perfunctory. Okay, let's even get started. Though, Where do we start? Even though um, the fights were cool, and especially in the color, I really like that you go through all of the different kind of zones and you go back and forth between being inside of the ring and fighting and blah 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 and move out mm -hmm. i was really glad to be done with them they were a great thing but i was really thrilled to be done the with them. yeah i was like Ugh, let's move out babies let's get out of here i don't want to be here too much um but if you read them in the color this this is an arc that should be read in color because you've got toy shops you've got the little people world You've got all these things and the colors are popping off all over the place. I love, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead. I'm moving ahead. Get over it. You're all excited about it. Okay. Um, why? There's so much to talk about at the end and I don't want to be all in the beginning. Where I really wanted to start with was when we get to the point that, um, what's his pickle? Our new, what's the name of our new, um, dude the blind justice man uh fujitora um i love when fujitora just lays it out on doflamingo and is like well we ain't doing it to take your side in the matter the navy is moving in i'm impressed at your res your resolve fujitora i'll deal with you after that fujitora just lays right out on the line to him like no no bite my ass this isn't for you i'm literally going to deal with you and how much you suck right after that and then he says 
so he's like, so what's your game? What are you in for? And he said, the complete and utter eradication of the seven warlord system. And so I keep wondering, like, how attached to the government is his ideas about the eradication of the seven warlord system? Does he have other people on his side? Have I not met somebody yet who is going to be working with him? I feel like that is a thing that's going to happen. And what are they replacing them with? And what are they going to replace it with? Because in the beginning, they were like, we can't allow these pillars to fall and the three pillars and da 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 And one of them would have been the seven warlords. And suddenly we're just like, oh yeah, we're just going to, you know, annihilate the uh, seven warlord system. So I'm wondering whether or not he's working on behalf of the government or if he's working on behalf of his own blind justice, that unlike other people, he sees the need to kill this through a simple justice system. And if you have blind justice, you don't give a shit what the government thinks or what they would hope to replace it with. Or if you need to replace it, like you wouldn't even think about that. And, and that I'm wondering who... Blind justice is instead exactly. of thinking about propriety, you just think of who did wrong and deserves to be punished. Exactly. So I'm wondering who's going to work with him. It sure like is a question. <clears throat> Well, in one of the SPSs, they talked about the, what is the Momo Ruta? What is the, what is the, um, Momentara? Yeah. And about how, and we have a kid named Momo now, but then he was like, and then they get two new ones and da, 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 da. So are those going to be the new people in it? And the Oda was like, I'm not sweating. You're sweating. (laughs) And, And so I think that he, because of that, has to have a partner. Well, there would have to be two new admirals in general because there's supposed to be three of them and one quit and one uh, was promoted. Also, I knew I was right. So the reverie is going to be this year. Yep, you called it. You called it that we'd be having a reverie. So the reverie is going to be this year. And um, and I think that at the reverie, we are going to have we are going to have a major shakedown from Luffy. He's going to shake the foundation of the system. All right, that's a prediction. I cannot wait. Oh, I loved getting to see our, I loved getting to see our beloved Luffy brother, Sabo, go in and fight on his behalf. Like, oh, yes. It was so good. It was also great because it fooled everyone and allowed Luffy to get closer to the main action. Also, um, I really do want to hear Pika's voice. Is it Pika? 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 Pika. If I was Pika... I would do such a better job of being him. I would be able to take off, take out this entire town. I would become even bigger. I would be ridiculous. Yeah, you think he's uh, going too small? I would grab the dirt from everywhere around me and I would like rip it out. You would not be able to take me down. And I would be standing on my own shoulder. People are saying, um, literally, I could do a better job of Pika than Pika people. Someone said, I don't really like Pika, but a lot of people are saying, whatever. I I just want to quickly say, I think the Doflamingo family has a lot of personality. I think they got character to them. I think they have interesting powers. I kind of don't like them very much. Like, as henchmen groups go, they're kind of low tier for me. Like, I'm not a big fan. They're below CP9 for me. They're below Baroque Works. Like, I, was, I love cool. Doflamingo, right. but the Doffy yeah. family just kind of don't do it for me. Yeah, I really like Baby Five, and I really like yeah. Viola. But she she ended yeah. up being like, "Screw you!" I was only pretending here. Yeah. Do any of the guys interest me at all? I'll be honest. No. I don't love him. As you learn more about him, I like Senor Pink as a character. I'll give him that. I know that sounds okay. shocking, but I stand by it. I'm I'm trying to imagine that. Um, if I we, think if we count Monet and Virgo, I like them, but they aren't part of the this part of the arc. Like. Monet and Virgo are part of the Doflamingo family, and I like them. I think that Sugar's ability is frickin' amazing. Like, the thing that they created for Sugar and the idea yeah. around Sugar is frickin' amazing. I really love it, but I hate Sugar as a character. Not, mm. I don't just hate Sugar for what she does. Uh, her evilness is meh. The only henchman legion that i think i rank lower other than like east blue like if we don't count east blue where oda was kind of just getting his footing and the henchmen in general weren't as entertaining i think the only henchman i rank lower is probably anarus oh yeah i would agree like i think yeah. the doflamingo <clears throat> family i like i like more than anarus because anarus priests are just kind of like peak boring henchmen okay Having said that, I don't love his whole group. 
I love the idea of it being a family. That I love. I love. I love the idea of them taking over as a group. Yes. I love how he sees it as being family, even though he's the person who took his dad's head and ended up killing his brother. Yeah. Um, because it feels very, yes, this person, I was about to say classic mafia, and then they said it. I love that, but I don't like them individually. I also yeah. think, and this person here, that's freaking hell, guys, you're on fire today. I also love Shigar's um, ability because it started to make me think of the missing hundred years. Mm. And it started to make me wonder about what other ways in which they have to make the hundred years disappear. And you, some you of it is brain going out on there. Something. I need to put a, you got my brain going on something that is it possible that Do Flamingo, similar to Enaru, is there, is this possible that they both see themselves as gods are they both meant to be allegories for the state of the world at large? And that's why we also see a three-tiered system here. Holy fuck, no, wait. We see a three-tiered system in both. I think any similarities you can find between Enaru and Doflamingo's structures and the plot lines of those two arcs are going to be relevant to the story on the whole. Because in both of them, you see a three-tiered structure of the god and the god's family who are seen as important regular humans being humans in dress rosa and skypeans and then the lesser being the shandians and the um tontata and both are connected to the legacy of noland a hundred percent noland is connected to the least of those people noland who is paralleled in a lot of ways people have to roger and luffy holy fuck so it was funny because a um, Morel has asked the same question about whether we think Sugar's ability. Um, do you think that someone used a Sugar ability to create the Void Century? And when I was watching this and thinking about how, just like in the Enaru to Do Flamingo, you have people don't know how they got up there. They there is an erasure of the history. They have no idea. So there's a part of their history that actually evaporated, and they don't know why they're in the sky. And then there's an erasure of people and their identity on the lower area. I think what's interesting is when we're doing um, Skypea, they did it in a large societal context of like a whole nation being moved and a whole nation feeling like they have to protect and remember the memory of their nation, but they're missing something. Whereas in this one, it's individuals go missing. Um, individual people are taken away and erased. Yeah. And so you start to wonder how could they use something that's similar to what Sugar's going on now that we know that Sugar has this as a way of erasing big memories like the Void Century, how we, the purpose of the Pong Glyphs, how we got um, that piece of Skypea away from Jaya and up into the air and stuff like this. So it started to make me think like, okay, what is that context? So people are saying that they think, uh, or I saw at least one person <laughs> say that they think that the Void Century was more just a tyrannical erasing of, of information, not something more mystical. I think that's very possible. I think a mystical side is also possible, but that doesn't mean the mystical side with Doflamingo can't be an allegory for it. And I think there is something interesting to seeing, like like I said earlier, where the Tontata feel to me like they are representing... I thought they might be representing humans to Celestial Dragons, but I no longer think that's the case. I think they represent no, think non-humans so. in the world of One Piece, the humans yeah. of Dress Rosa represent humans, and Dofi yeah. and the Doflamingo family represent the Celestial Dragons. Yes. That's, Ooh, that's, that's now a lot to feeling. think on. That's a lot to think on, then. Right? Ooh. I'm all this, one yeah, course a of the ability or sworn enemies of God. That's actually a translation that calls them the natural enemy of the God, which I prefer. Yeah, I have that in the colored version. It's the natural enemies of the God, and, I've, and I have a thing on it now. Yeah, and so when I was watching this, I adored um, Sugar's existence. I hate Sugar with my whole heart and soul. Oh, Frostfire but Tiger, what did you miss? If you'd showed up five minutes ago, I'd say, like, nothing. Unfortunately, it's not five minutes ago. Now you miss the whole idea of the Void Century and a comparison between Enel and Doflamingo and a three-tiered system. So now I'm wondering <laughs> whether or not it's possible that um, there is something very similar to Sugar's system that is used to erase information about the Void Century and and what the dragons did. 
And stone so, soup fruit could have created the red wine. Yeah, it absolutely could have. I'm writing that down. Because you know that I believe the red line is going to be taken apart. Yes. I believe this whole system is going to be taken apart and the all blue is going to be when the entire world is reconnected. Mm -hmm. That will be the all blue. And this is the first fruit we've seen that I feel like it makes sense to have made it. Because sure, in theory, the magma fruit could have made it, but we've seen the pace that he can create magma and it doesn't feel fast it's enough slow. for that to make sense. Yeah, exactly. But if you connect to one mountain and spread your stone body to grow the mountain outwards, raising up the sea floor I, into a exactly. wall, it also explains why it's all the same rock. And it, ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so if you think about the that ability and you think about, I wonder this too, like, you know how you often have a trope inside of all of these different types of things where um, your bigger power has been taken from you and the larger ability to use things no longer exists and that it used to be even more powerful at one time, but people mm -hmm. realized that it was too much and, and found a way of like dampening the power structures. Mm -hmm. And so you got to wonder if you have things like the stone fruit what other fruits would be available what other ideas or strengths would be available that would allow people to create like put the mountains up and create this system now that we've seen the stone stone fruit we know that it's possible something that and i same thing with now that you know sugar's fruit you know that it's possible to wipe things out as if they never existed there's also just a thing in one piece where the people who push their fruits harder tend to be nearer to the top like you know for a fact that if Pika wasn't a high tier henchman and was like, if he was the Do Flamingo of this arc, he'd have pushed the fruit farther. Like there'd be more he was doing with it. Like, look at what Crocodile and Do Flamingo can do with their fruits because they're the big bad. Look what Luffy can do with his because he's the hero. There is absolutely more potential to the Stone Stone fruit than what we see because it's not being used by someone at the top of the game. Well, it's like I said already. I, I think Pika Pika's his fruit shit. If yeah. I had Pika's fruit, I would have won. If Luffy had had Pika, he would have won. Pika is, how can you be, how can you have the ability of the stone stone fruit and be so ineffective? That is a good question. <laughs> like you are, you've got an ability where you could have taken the entire ocean beside the goddamn island. You could have sucked yourself into there, pulled it all out and been something that was impossible to get rid of and just stepped on everything. Like you just, you just bite. You could have opened holes under everyone. You could have opened your mouth. Think under about holes. Head. Holy fuck. Oh, like Zoro's there. He's getting ready to jump at you. Open a hole underneath him. Oh. Close it shut. Close it shut. Close it shut. He's close done. it shut. Literally clap him. Literally. If it had been me, I would have been like, oh, oops, Swiss cheese. You're okay. all gone. Okay. I wasn't. I was thinking until you said holes. I was like, yeah, he's underusing it a little. You said holes. And I was no. like, holy fuck. This guy is not using this fruit enough. He's Sucks. You can eat. Yeah. You could make your mouth go underneath people and just chew them for fun, just to be a little showy. <laughs> you say holes, and I'm like, never mind. This guy wants wasting his fucking fruit. Holy shit! He's wasting his talent. I would have rocked it if you had put me in there as Pika. Nobody would have escaped. No. Uh, because, anyway, yeah. I'm embarrassed when my bad guys don't bad guy enough. And he, well, there's an argument that the that you have to be slow when expanding out of the island because if too much of your body's technically touching the sea, you'll start to get weaker. So you've got to very quickly pull stone you can out go or straight down. You can go straight down from you. There's so much more rock. Oh my God, under right. If you fuse straight down, you could get a bunch of molten rock and come exactly. out of the ocean with a molten and fist. Up. And then such a small percentage of your body is touching the ocean, it doesn't matter. And you just have a exactly. giant molten fist coming onto the island. What? That's what like, I'm trying to say. No, 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 He's no, no. so no. weak. I think Diamante is not as bad with this fruit because Diamante has a worse fruit. Like, yeah, Diamante, Diamante's fruit isn't as good as Pika's. Yeah, Diamante, I think, is actually being pretty clever with a shit fruit. Like, I think Diamante is doing about as much as you can with the fucking flap flap fruit. Yeah, you if you've got the flap flap fruit and you're managing to be as cool as he is, you've done well. Pika yeah. is just a complete idiot who doesn't know how to use this fruit, who hasn't even tried. Somebody said here he skipped leg day. You bet he did. I think I think Diamante and Treble are pushing their fruits a lot more than fucking Pika. I just love the little guys, P.S., who are inside making the fruit. I think that's... And then they're just like, yeah, you're helping your princess. And they're like, oh, good. As long as we're helping our princess. I think it was so important because later on when they find out they've been used, one of the things that they're mad about is 
I don't understand how anyone could lie to us like that. And that's one of the reasons we're so mad at you now. And it's like, oh, you're so sweet, you little losers. You're um, so cute. You're just so sweet. Gullible, but so sweet. I Which one's more obnoxious? Guy. Treble's more obnoxious. Treble is the most obnoxious character. He's the just most disgusting thing I've ever seen. And it mm, made sense Cricket, because... Cricket, that's so good. That's so good, Cricket. It made yes. sense because Oda has a tendency to love snot, so I should have known that eventually I would have to watch somebody who just drips Is snot. snot. I hate Treble very, very much. But at least Treble is doing something with his shit ability. But I think it was very important. So when somebody was saying that they don't think that the hundred years are going to have anything that has kind of a magical quality to it, I would disagree. I would disagree because I think that Oda putting um, Sugar's thing here is kind of his way of saying, like, see, we have ways to make things disappear. So were, were they able to disappear everything? No. But nobody, nobody knows what happens in the hundred years. Nobody knows any of that history. Only very few people even know about the Ponclyphs. So when you think about that, um, th except for in the seas where nobody yeah. was, when you think about that, you have to imagine that there was some sort of mechanism used to help to erase the time period. And that's why I think that it's absolutely possible that this is giving us a heads up. Robin getting turned into a toy, by the way, I mean, that was that I'm with, I'm totally with Usopp. That was one of the shiveriest moments ever when you were like, oh, yep. Oh, because suddenly it was like exist. for everyone else, Robin is no longer there. She no longer exists. And I was just, oh, my God, my whole heart. There's a theory that people go both the ways on if they like it or not, that the reason Usopp had a harder time standing up to fight and uh, was running away before he had to turn back was that he lost some of his character development because he no longer had the narrative as part Robin. of his life that he saved Robin as Sniper King. Ooh, wow. I, some people say it cheats him out of his character. Some people says it kind of makes him stronger because he was able to without that find the will to fight just for the tontata and i think that's the part that regardless of which side you agree on he did in that moment choose to fight for only the tontata because he didn't know his crew was there he didn't know he had a crewmate to save he did that just for the little guys knowing that like they were the only thing on the line and i think that's pretty brave of him i would go i would go one further i think it makes him even stronger right because not only does he not know that robin exists and a lot of his strength came from work that he had with robin he still knows that his other crewmates exist and he doesn't know that they are in as much danger as they are like he knows that he's supposed to be helping out with this plan and that this part of the plan has failed but he has this tendency to kind of let Luffy and Zoro, Sanji, Frankie, everyone, um, he'll let them take the lead oftentimes because he does see himself as cleanup crew. And so he probably doesn't even see himself as being the ultimate um, hit or miss in this, right? And even though he doesn't know where other people are in at it, he just says, you know what? I can't. You shut up. Usaland would never lie. And then He's like, and then it's, he made us a promise. The legendary Hiowa would never lie to us. If you insult Uzalan's honor again, you will pay for that. And it hit something inside of Usopp where he's like, I can't, I, I can't run away. He says, I'm no legendary hero. My name isn't even Usaland. I'm the sniper of the terrifying Straw Hat crew. My name is Usopp and I'm a pirate. And then he not only comes back, he takes him his place of who he actually is. My name is Usopp. Remember that, Tontadas. And if I should die, build me a statue next to, next to Nolan because I'm about to become your legendary hero. He takes over and forces himself to be himself and trust himself, which for Usopp is a big freaking deal. To trust that he is enough and know that he can do things and that he doesn't have to pretend to be the Sniper King or pretend to be um, a legendary hero who's related to Nolan and instead 
um, takes his place as himself. That was a huge change for him. And so I thought that it made him even stronger. Not only does he not know that Robin is in there and that Robin has disappeared or that she ever existed, he decides to come clean about who he is and why he matters and bees enough. And that's why I thought that moment was one of my favorites of all time ever. Uh, Cricket, unfortunately, I need to make this up. It is, we're going, don't worry. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's beautiful that he just finds it in himself to be honest about him in this moment and fight with his name. I think it's wonderful and it's a great moment of development. I've seen a lot of people hate that moment because they're like, why does he run away again? Uh, this is just retreading old ground, but it's different in so many ways. He has nothing to fight for in that moment except his own honor. That's literally it as far as he knows. You're right. He doesn't know how important this is to everyone else in the moment. He doesn't know that this is integral and he doesn't know that Robin is there and needs his help. It's just him. Yeah, and that's why I think that this makes it an even more special um, piece and why I was even more amazed by him. Even though, come on, giving him God status was whatever. But I was really proud of him because he, he, when it came down to it, he was reverting to his very most basic him all the way back to Syrup Village. He was becoming his oldest old self as if he hadn't learned anything. And instead, as he was running away and listening to them have faith in him, and we also learned how important it is to have faith in people who are important to you. Because if you think about um, inside of <clears throat> my favorite arc, um, when number two stands outside of Luffy's chamber and just screams, you've got this, Luffy. You can do it, Luffy. That idea of of believing in somebody actually gives them the courage to live up to their potential. I love that um, Oda keeps coming back to that idea and keeps putting it in here again and that they have belief in him and say, like, don't ever talk about him that way. He is a hero. And then Usopp says, you know what? I can be the hero. Can we talk about how important this is? We're talking about an arc of trust and tr choosing your leadership and who you're willing to trust. And then Tontadas are people who are absolutely willing to trust anyone. And despite that, they've formed this revolution against Doflamingo. Even they, who are these symbols of pure trust, have started a revolution. I think that's such a potent thing in this symbology we're talking about in this, in this giant saga. Yeah, that we're talking yeah. about what it means to pick someone to follow and give your trust to. That these people yeah. whose flaw is believing everyone still can say enough is enough and have a point where they need to revolt and care about themselves fucking bellamy can't do that and the tontadas nope. who believe everyone can and the tontadas are so trusting that you would think that they would definitely not be the top ones to be able to see through all the bullshit and yet here we are how easy it could be for a naive population i i do agree that I giving agree. him the the word of being God kind of showed you how easy it is to become a God, but I was like, Ugh. It makes me wonder if whoever was responsible, whoever were the gods of the world before the Celestial Dragons, if they were bad, like, and the reason the Celestials got praised was because, and became what they were, was because they were the heroes who defeated that group. Yeah, I could see that. I have a feeling around that already. Like... Mm -hmm. I've started to see the D-Clan as being some sort of important protectorates of the world that create ba crept balance between two major groups. And I feel like eventually, and I'll, and I'll go into this later over the next few months, I'd imagine, I feel like Luffy is going to be the ultimate D who is, go <laughs> yeah. uh, who is going to ignite and empower all the other Ds of the world, that they're going to come into a type of power they didn't have before because of Luffy. Um, like he's almost like a power bank for them. And all of a sudden they come into their abilities to be the people who are able to actually be the um, natural threat of the dragons. And so I feel like Luffy is going to end up being this kind of like, massive power bank explosion that's going to wake something up inside of them and they're going to become um the people that they are meant to be and that whether or not they've come into that power yet or not 
It doesn't matter. That's why I laughed, Red Potato. Um, it doesn't matter because it still seeps out of them and they're still the people who cause the most problem in the world because it's in them no matter uh, what they do. But I think that Luffy is going to, uh, I don't want to say the word turn on and it's the only way I can do it, turn on something inside of the people who are Ds and that yeah, all of them wanna, are going to come. You don't want to declare that Luffy's going to turn on all the Ds? Yeah, I don't want to say that the biggest D is going to turn on all the other Ds, but that is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Activate. That's the word Activate I can use. Activate was the word you were looking for, but I didn't want to help ah, you. Ignite. I was just having a total brain aneurysm and going like, because all I could think of then is turn on. And I was like, oh my God, don't say it. And then <laughs> brain was like, you mentioned say it. But I really do think that Luffy is going to be the thing that activates all the other Ds around the world. And I had even said to Drock, I'd written down that um, Law was going to be a D. I was like, there's no way Law's not a D. And then it was Yeah, unfortunately, it did happen within the arc where you guessed it. Doesn't matter. Four chapters later, boom, Law's a D. And I was like, yes. Because there's the similar feeling between the people who are Ds. And then I thought I mean, to myself... But you did say last time that you felt like he was somewhere between the essence of Blackbeard and Luffy and couldn't decide exactly. which he was and it was weakening him. Whereas like, you can't say Blackbeard or Luffy don't know who they are and how they want to operate. Exactly. Exactly. They're actualized people. Exactly. And so this is why I feel like, and, and it's going to be a little bit of a problem too, because I think that Luffy is going to be activating the Ds. I think all the Ds are going to come into their own. And that includes Blackbeard. That's interesting. And that's going to make it really interesting. Ooh. So... I'm kind of loving that. I'm also loving the thing about Waterloo and Trafalgar, given that we've got two battles that take place within 10 years of each other. And when you start to compare them, which I will do later, it becomes really interesting to see how these, how law would fit into these two battles, one in 1805 and one in 1815. And you can see how this would be uh, an allegory for them. And we can see some of the reasons that law is who he is based on the water on the Trafalgar and uh, Waterloo thing that we'll look at in a minute. Next book. Oh, no, Next we have book. to look at this. Next book. Everyone knew. There's nobody who didn't know. After we watched Kairos, we all knew that he was going to be the um, person who the statue was made after, Captain yeah. Kairos, age 25. But it was still done well, even though I knew that it was definitely going to be him and he was the, actually her dad and he couldn't save okay, and blah, you have blah, blah. no idea though when you're saying all this that it's like a little bit tired because you know how it would happen but it's well done i need to tell you that someone counted and the anime flashed back two clips of that flashback after it was done literally i think about 30 times from what i remember ew really yeah yeah well then everyone knew Oh, he's no, 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 like, like after it was done, like you're saying it's a little bit tired because we knew it got so tired for anime viewers because they just kept flashing to it over and over and over and over. His his wife was 16. Oh, that's messed yeah. up. Heroes, no, no. Why does he keep doing this? Oh, no, Does, why? Doesn't anyone doesn't anyone understand that when Shakespeare did it, he was actually making fun of the people who were forcing their children to marry early, and that it was a condemnation of society. God. Okay, here we go. When you watch Luffy be, or sorry, Usopp be captured and the way that she said, and then you will die. And then <laughs> he also gets attacked by the world's hottest pepper as well. Couldn't have happened to a stupider jerk. I hate her so much. And Love I... that the Tontata is not wanting to kill her and using poison instead is her undoing. Their kindness is her undoing. And the f like they didn't use a lethal poison. They just used something spicy to knock her out. And the fact that Usopp gets rewarded for his bravery, even though he had nowhere near the strength to stop treble. It's great. Yeah. yeah, I think it was super good. And using it as a spicy thing. I would agree. It was so good. Robin coming back into her own. Everybody coming back onto their own. He did such a great job of bringing um, the memory of who everyone but was back into the place. And... And everybody remembering that they had loved ones and that they had people in their lives and everybody remembering all the people who had disappeared and what the king had done. They, they, everything goes to the side and everyone is just like, oh my God, I have a wife. I, I have a husband. Oh my God, there is a ruler over this kingdom who is missing. It was just so well done. 
watching everyone come back out. And it was incredible to watch Follow Me and I Will Guide You. Fool, lower me down and unhand me. I have blood spilling down my face, says Usopp. And, and again, he shows that, Oda shows in this one how um, Usopp becomes a god. And, then, and it was so easy for him to become a god. A mistake made a god. And then, not, not ten chapters later, his god, god or not, his status is taken away and the people decide that if, it, if it's the god or him, it's them. And they attack their god. And so he showed how easy God status was to reverse or how even being a God isn't that important. I think we aren't going to be piecing together all of the hidden thing of this scene until near the end of the series. Like, I genuinely don't think we have all the pieces yet to properly break down what this means. But I, I agree that all of that is going to end up feeling relevant to the end of the series. I agree. I think this is a lot like Skypea. Like the more you making that comparison with sugared less celestial dragons has made me realize that I think a lot of this is going to feel allegorical to the series at large when we reach the end point in, in ways that we can't quite figure I, out yet. I really feel that <clears throat> there are five chapters in this arc already mm -hmm. that I would want to take out and put against I think it's four or five chapters so far that I can think of a Skypea and just read them beside each other. And I think that it is possible between those to find out something. I agree. And I think when you, where I'm you gonna find do it common after. ground between those two is where you're going to find yeah. what they're trying to say. That's what I've decided. So I'm going to, after I'm done this arc, I'm going to go back in and find the chapters I'm thinking oh, yeah. about. We are and I'm taking gonna, a week off after this one, so you absolutely can. And I'm going to take those chapters apart and I'm going to compare them across each other. And I guarantee it's going to show something. I was a little bit pissy with Sabo in this thing. And, and I'm hoping this isn't the reason that people are angry at Sabo or have troubles with Sabo. But I'm thinking it might Wait, be. So what, what is this? So he says, um, the first Lucy was the 400 million man. Yeah. The future king of the pirates, Straw Hat. The future king of the pirates, Straw Hat Luffy. And my little brother, nice to meet you. Revolutionary Army, Chief of Staff, Sabo. Chief of Staff, by the way, good job, Sabo. And then it says, we're from the Revolutionary Army. Luffy's a good guy, isn't he? He hasn't changed a bit since we were kids. Bullshit. That made me so pissy at Sabo. I mean, that's not <laughs> the reason people are mad at him, but uh, I think but he you come in here. Wise. No, but he isn't. He isn't the same. The only thing about Luffy that is the same from the time that we have met him is that he's still filled with goodness. He's still chaotic. There's a bunch of things about him that are very, very similar, but. To say that he is hasn't changed at all is is crazy. Luffy isn't exactly the same. I would completely disagree with people when they say that. Luffy, from the lessons that he's learned from all the different people, has become a completely different leader. He looks at the world in a different way. He understood the need to take a break and not rush into everything and allow people to raise himself up. So I think... That it's interesting that he comes in, he only spends two seconds with with Luffy, and then he's like, still the same thing, hasn't changed at all. And that's actually a thing that we do to people. Um, in psychology, we talk about how people can often change, and they can start being very, very different people. But when they hang out with people that knew them before, they revert because the people they knew before are incapable of seeing who they are now. Someone and pointed out so, something that I like, which is he might just be referring to him being a crybaby because, like, Ed, that was their bit with him, and he cries the second he sees Sabo, and it was like an endearing thing. Like, yeah, that's not what it Luffy. sees. I mean, that's not what it says. I think that more than likely, Sabo sees himself as a changing, um, maturing, growing human being who is now the revolutionary um, chief of staff, but he doesn't see all the changes of Luffy. And I think a lot of people with little brothers, little sisters other people that they are older than and have been a uh, mentor to are incapable of seeing the growth of the people who are under them. Even with parents and children, it's hard sometimes to see the people that 
you have helped to take care of as being growing, changing people who are different than and what you are also bring up that it could just be the core of his person that hasn't changed. Which I think is fair. Mm. Now, what pisses people off about Sabo, you're already at, which is he's fighting now for the flame flame fruit. And the second that happened, people were like, oh, we're just getting, we're replacing Ace with a new fire brother. Mm, yeah, I could see that. But I, I don't give a shit. I think Ace would have been thrilled that Sabo has it. Yep. I think Ace would have been like, awesome. I I like that the one who gets my fruit isn't going to be some rando, that it's going to be Sabo. And I love Sabo, and I still do. I just, I'm really hoping that Sabo doesn't try to revert Luffy to being um, a basic of who he was and not seeing all the changes that he went through. That's what I'm hoping happens. Um, so when he sees, but it seems that weapons are being manufactured elsewhere. Where are they coming from? So when you start to think about it, I started to wonder if the government intentionally wants, um, they like that they have Doflamingo in this position um, because they like, if you look at some of the boats, the boats that are going to different places that are part of the government, that are in different countries, are able to put fake labels, look like pirates, et cetera, et cetera, on their boat. So the government loves there being pirates on the water then because the government... Um, different different lands and countries can disguise their boats as being pirate boats and then they can get weapons, they can get um, other things and move them throughout the world freely under the guise of different people who are one of the seven or the four and they can move all their shit over around the world and get all of the weaponry that they need, food they need or black market things. So you could see why somebody who is into blind justice would be like, I want to get rid of that because I think that they're, the government is able to use the pirates as a way of having an end to their own means. They can gain control, they can watch the world, they can move their weaponry around, etc, etc, etc. I also think there's an interesting division between the mentality of the government and the Navy because the Navy, while they are part of the government, are not necessarily fully aligned with the world government when it comes to values. I disagree, but um, Ellie, I completely disagree. She said, no, sorry, Mama, but there's an awkward way of interpreting. That's an awkward way of interpreting Sabo's comment. You've got to remember what the character is looking at and what they mean when they say things. I don't know what you mean by that. I think I think it's fair. I think it's fair to say that Sabo, like there's an endearing way to say they haven't changed, which is like, oh, good. The part of them that matters is still the same. Like if you say that reassured about someone, I think that means that like, the part that you think is important to who they were is still there. No, he says he hasn't changed a bit since we were kids. Mm. That's what he says. I'm looking at it. Mm. That is not something that you can interpret. He just says he hasn't changed a bit since we were kids. And all that does is memorial memorialize somebody at a specific time in their life. All right. And you haven't had enough time to hang out with him, get to know who he is get to know what he's done. You've only watched him from a distance. So I would agree. There's a lot of Luffy that is the same. And there's a lot of core of Luffy that, thank God, hasn't changed. And he's still filled with that same kind of naivety and chaos. But I just don't like the statement. Okay. Um, uh, you are so allowed. When we're watching, and so I'm hoping that Sabo gets to see Luffy as being something more. And I'm hoping that he treats him as an equal. Because that was my worry, that when I saw that, I decided, hey, humans, back off. I'm allowed to feel that way. When I saw that, <laughs> I decided that um, it would be awkward then if this is the way that Sabo feels because it won't let him um, allow Luffy to be the adult that he is, right? So when they're making decisions, it would feel like Sabo would feel that he would have, Luffy would have to defer to Sabo's decisions because he's older and he's more important in this thing and he has changed and grown into leadership do you know what i mean whereas i, I think at the end it, of ace's yeah. life ace actually said after he met luffy with his crew he said like luffy's a great guy but you know what jimbe i'm really happy because now that i've seen his crew and i know who he is and the people that he has backing um him up i'm now not worried about him because he was saying, I know that he's grown and changed and I know that he has people on his side and I know that he now has um, people who believe in him and who can stand up with him. And so when Ace told uh, Jimbe all of this, you could see that now Ace understood that Luffy had changed and grown. 
Whereas Sabo hasn't had the time with Luffy to know who he is or what he's gone through or seen him with his crew. So I'm hoping, my hope is, is that as we watch this, I don't have to watch Sabo be like, Luffy, I know better. I'm hoping that Sabo can see Luffy for who he is. That's my hope. But my worry is, having read this, that I was like, eek, I hope he doesn't start to just feel like he's in charge and he knows better. We'll have to wait and find out. We will definitely have to wait. Um, okay. Pet the boy. The boy needs pets. That's very important. I would agree that Jimbei is like Luffy's grandfather. And I think also because Jimbei got to see Ace talking about Luffy and got to see Ace talk about how Luffy has changed and grown and how he has this great crew and he doesn't have to worry about him anymore and... He's so much stronger than he was, and he's so happy. I think that when Jimbei met Luffy and then saw Luffy do what he did and try so hard and work with his entire might to save Ace, I think that Jimbei has this really, like, he's like, Luffy is chaos. And then he saw Luffy under the water as well. Luffy is chaos, and Luffy is insane. Um, but there is, but Luffy is also, for some reason, there's something about Luffy where his madness is a method. And so I think that Jimbe is like a different level per of a uh, fan of Luffy. If we're talking about someone interacting with Luffy's madness and having to put trust in it and understand and coming to understand what it is to work with Luffy, we have to talk about Law in this arc reacting to the way Straw Hat is. We definitely will. Law and Luffy are one of the funniest pairs in the series. Swear to fucking God. They are just well hilarious. Well, something that I really, really loved about this is I felt like, remember when we talked and I said that I felt like Law was somewhere in between um, Luffy and Blackbeard? That he was, even. Yeah, that he was something in between. And then watching him here, you could see, A, why that would happen with what Law has gone through. And, oh, you, you and I were talking about earlier the interpretation you had about Law and his backstory first, so I can go into this. Oh my god, do you want me to bring up this bit? Yeah, go. I've never seen people bring this up, but my favorite bit for a long time with Law has been the funny thing about Law that nobody talks about that I think is the best thing is if any straw hat is talking to Trafalgar Law about their backstory, any of them, Law can at any point just go, yeah, me too. Like, genuinely, let's, uh, uh, let's, let's play the game. You be a straw hat and I'll be Law. Tell me about your backstory. Okay. Um, Robin, all yeah. my place was destroyed. All my people. Yeah, same. Uh, Nami, my mom was killed. Yeah, same. In front of you? Yeah. Yeah, same. And my parents were murdered. Yeah, same. And, and then the person that took care of me after my parents were murdered and I was found abandoned was also killed. Yeah, it happened to me. Every one of them we realized. So it's pretty crazy. Okay. This is what I was looking at. Naval HQ, Admiral Maynard, the pursuer. Um, and, oh, no, here it is. The underground trading port shows these ships in the harbor <clears throat> that all have pirate ships on them. And then when you rip it off, Naomi says, uh, they're made to look like pirate ships. But these are actually traders from the kingdom of the big shots. Nations from all over the world are here doing their dark business in this port. So when you look at it, you realize that, of course, the government would want um, Doflamingo to exist. And of course, the government would want him to run all his black market schemes because they all benefit from it. Everything from um, slave trade all the way to shipping illegal uh, substances through the dark market. And as long as you have the the pirates existing on the world and just because you keep wondering right like why would the government want to continue to have pirates existing all over the world why wouldn't they just work really really hard to actually eradicate pirates and then when you realize well of course they're not going to eradicate pirates they are letting their boats pretend to be pirates so they can get away with doing sketchy shit and benefit from it. I and mean, those are individual nations not the world government as a collective which is worth but it's knowing. not that the world government there. doesn't know right Most like likely, this is yeah. what you've this is what you come to realize. This is the prediction is that, of course, the world government knows that this is taking place and they also benefit from it. Who's probably helping to make some of their um, weaponry that they use probably being done through the dark market. 
How are they moving stuff about? Probably through the dark market. And so they are also benefiting off of this. And so are all the different nations. So when you talk about fighting against all the nations and fighting against the government or getting rid of Do Flamingo, it's a much bigger deal than it's first made out to be because who's going to fight with you against Do Flamingo if they're using Do Flamingo to benefit? I also think it shows a stark difference between the Marines and the world government because the world government is like, yeah, you know, this can happen and we are probably aware of it. Like CP0 is here, they probably know. Whereas the Navy are like Sengoku being like, we need to annihilate pirates. Balance doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that uh, your white beard helps balance the world and does mostly good. We must annihilate pirates. So I feel like the Marines are in this different state than the world government then, where the world government might have these gray areas and be like, yeah, things can operate in the shadows. Whereas Marines are just like, pirates are bad. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about last time when we were saying there's a differentiation between the Marines and um, the world government, and we are not the same. And I think there would be a tendency to sometimes match them together and think of the Marines as being a section yeah. of the world government. Because they are, not, they are under the world government. They are part of it, yeah. Theoretically, but, and yet mm. they are very different. Mm -hmm. because ideologically, I think that it's a very distinct Ideologically, part. they're very different. And I think that, that this is one of those times where we're supposed to notice as readers just how much difference there is between the world government and the Marines. Because you've got somebody with blind justice from the Marines saying, like, we need to take down the entire system of pirates of the seven um, warlords. And meanwhile, the world government would probably be like, no, 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 that's one of the pillars that we're going to need because that's how we move shit throughout the planet. If we don't have pirates on the water, how are we going to move crap that we don't want to be seen as being moved by us? How are we going to benefit in ways that we don't want people knowing we're benefiting? And so having the pirates there is, is very convenient mm -hmm. for not only different nations who are looking to use the black market, but for the world government itself. And then with inside of the Marines, they have a different idea of what justice looks like. So yeah. I thought that was... I thought that was a really interesting little piece that it put out there. What are we moving on hey. to next? Are we talking about your best boy? Yeah, no. So when Law is being moved around by Luffy, I think this is a really important part of the story because Law first had to put himself in the hands of Korra. Korra is just like, I'm taking you, I'm moving you around, I'm looking for a cure, um, hearing about who you are, finding out that you were a D, broke me, I need to be, I, I need to help you. Um, and so that helped to rebuild some of who Law was after all the things that happened to Law occurred because Law was broken, absolutely broken. You could see when he says he wanted to absolutely tear everything down and uh, Doflamingo has that same feeling as him. And then, boom, you go into Luffy. So he's actually handcuffed. He's unable to use his powers because he's um, handcuffed with C prisms. And he has to rely on um, chaotic moving Luffy to keep him safe. And you can see this kind of thing building up in Law, where he realizes, like, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what is put in front of you. Luffy is going to work to keep you safe. And Luffy is going to have your back this entire time. And Luffy is going to see your friendship as being important enough to put his life on the line. And I think that Luffy acts as therapy for Law. Like it's that next piece of therapy because it was one thing for somebody who was older than him who saw him as a child that needed to be protected to work on his behalf and to treat him like he was worth something. But it's another thing to have somebody who's younger than you who sees your value and your worth not because of what you're able to do because your powers have been taken from you. And since he took the um, devil fruit, one of the things, only things that people are use him for or think that he's important for is his devil fruit abilities. To have somebody like Luffy caring for you and carrying you literally on his back and putting his life on the line for you, despite the fact that you have no benefits from your devil fruit, you can't help out in any ways, you're literally dead weight, um, actually feels like a type of healing that you probably couldn't get from anywhere else. And so Luffy is kind of like that final therapist that makes Law feel like he has value and is something is somebody who is worthwhile. And so you think about him carrying this, what could conceivably be seen as dead weight, and instead Luffy sees as val a valuable person for who he is. And then when they get to the top and they see Bellamy 
And immediately Luffy is absolutely pissed off and wants to protect Bellamy. It's when Law can see just how serious Luffy is about friendship and just how serious that Luffy is um, about valuing life and those who mean something to him. And I think that that was a real type of therapy for Law that's going to change him as a person and how he acts in the future and let his character develop in a more rounded way. I think that's really beautiful. I do too. I really liked it. I was like, I just, yeah, and kind of very much like Boa in the way that Boa had only ever been seen as a sexualized version or beauty. And Luffy is like, your beauty means nothing to me. I'm, I'm immune to it. And, and that had a healing for Boa that Luffy found value in her that was beyond what her looks were. And Luffy found value in law and beyond what he could do for Luffy. I mean, Luffy just has value in people. If you are not a bad person, if you don't want to hurt people, you are worthwhile to Luffy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Paladin. Like, Luffy is, Law is 26 right now, and Luffy is carrying him like a child and and moving him throughout the world and, and um, helping him survive, even though it's actually taking away from Luffy's abilities to survive and slowing him down. And I think that... It's fantastic. I mean, he knows that he's going to get the keys, da 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 eventually. But I was like, you know what, Luffy? You're doing the big work there, therapist Luffy. The boy needs it. Um, and I was so happy with Cavendish. Not at first. Cavendish is running around being like, I need to be so important. Everything about me needs to be so important. And then Cavendish kind of just gets over it and realizes that in order to do this work, I'm just going to need to... Stop needing to be the most important thing and just be here. I mean, it did take his horse getting his head bit. That horse better be okay, P.S. That horse better be freaking okay. Um, and then having Cavendish be like, no, you move forward. It is less important that I be a big deal. What? The horse is dead? What? The horse this is dead? Says, this person says the horse is dead. Oh, wow. I didn't know the horse is dead. No. No, people with the horse dead. There's a, there's a debate. Nope, he lives. They're a liar. He's not. Okay, it seems like more people say the horse is not dead. Oh my god, I was gonna be so crushed. They're like <laughs> horse is dead. <gasps> so I thought it was really amazing that Cavendish was like, yeah, okay, maybe being the most important thing in the room in the world and having all this attention on me isn't. What matters, what matters is in the long run is each one of us has to do our part. We have to play a part and only together are we going to um, win. And so I thought it was just amazing when Cavendish stopped and is like, no, you go on, you take care of Flamingo and I'm going to fight these guys here. I was like, oh, I'm so proud of you right now. Um, I'm going to go into the colored version now because I only have these weird things in here and I want to go into it in here instead yeah do you know the name of uh on the note of horses i was going to bring this up do you know the name of don quixote's horse from the story don quixote is it cavendish no it's what rosinante it? oh that's really awesome yeah he is named after a horse i was so angry watching all those people okay i didn't get to watch the anime co so yeah clue me in how yeah. is the one-legged soldier moving? Is he just hopping quickly? Yeah, pretty much. I think he's got a rollerblade, maybe. From there's that crazy. Am I made up? He skates. He's a skate. He's got a little roller skate. I'm not crazy. I don't. I don't see a skate on his foot inside of the manga. So maybe do they just they... added that to the anime because it was too hard to animate him hopping. Yeah, because in the manga he doesn't have a skate on his foot when he's human. He only well, has when a he's skate human, he when... hops. Okay, so he hops around. That That is actually what occurs. That is actually what happens, yes. Okay, I really hope Law gives him some sort of a leg. That'd be really nice if he did that. Um, I love the fight in between the... Okay, this part I do love. And I don't love Mr. Pinkface, because I don't know what it means to be so hard-boiled, but... I do love the fight between the two real men of Frankie and Pink where they square off against each other and they're like, we're going to have a fight for real men. And then they're like, diaper balls. 
they start bringing out the most ridiculous things. Okay, here we go. This is what I was curious about. Go ahead. Well, just the idea that a fight for real men means it's not that shit that Dofi and Luffy are going to be doing where you're using its special attacks and dodging and trying to block. It's just, no, hit for hit. We'll take turns. Yeah, but the way that they do it, it's just the most hilarious thing. The moves that they both use. Yep. I'm going to get there afterwards because I'm not there. I'm just thinking ahead. Because I was watching the fight and Saba was using the his new fruit. And then he said that his hands are actually dragon claws. Yeah, well, to get the fruit, he broke the arena by using some sort of dragon claw something. Put his yeah, hands on I the remember arena that. and fucking exploded it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But he said, he says here that you're no match, da, 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 and he said, my fingers are the claws of a dragon. That is what he said, yeah. Yeah. It's really kind of making me wonder what else is taking place inside of there that we're not aware of. Probably nothing. Yeah, no. <laughs> Probably nothing at all. I was so glad that... Usi was okay. Usi lives. That Usi took them through. But it was a guarantee that they were going to be um mm. that they were going to be being fooled and that we were gonna run into Doflamingo. That was a guarantee. I was pretty pretty sad that they couldn't tell that they were being led astray. Um also don't let me forget that I wanted to do the Jinbei chivalrous journey with the lost sea kitten, but not yet. Um, how about for the sake of, of expediency, why don't we save that for the tier list stream when we add to the cover stories? Okay, but it's really important it gets hit since I think it's part of the... All right, we can bring it up because if it's part of your theories about sky gods. Yeah. Okay, my brain doesn't feel orderly, so here's what we're going to do. My brain also doesn't feel orderly today. I, I got so hyped about the realization that there was the parallels between this and the whole story just like with Alabasta. And then that took all of the remaining juice my brain had, I think. I love the way that they got all the people up in the air. I also think that it was a really good way for um, Oda to get to draw the skirt lifting. But when they got um, Robin and all of them to go up in the air with the Tontella Airline yellow kaboo, and they have them how many little bugs holding them and flying in circles above their head. I thought that was absolutely so cute. I just love them going up on their little flight. Mm. I really hope that Bellamy gets to move on and become somebody who is not attached to Doflamingo. That skill that Doflamingo has to cover everything in his um, strings and create a prison, by the way, a birdcage. Bird cage? That's terrifying. The birdcage is horrifying. It's so scary. Like, Doflamingo's fruit in general is so crazy. He has pushed it to its fucking limits, and it is terrifying. I think one of the greatest things in here is at the Smile Factory, when all the little guys are working inside, and from the outside, they use all the bees to say, unlock it from the inside. And they're like, what's going on? We've been fooled. <gasps> We've been fooled? What does that mean? Fight! <laughs> <laughs> I think that was so fantastic. I was like, that is a fin- that is the way that that should have been done. It was incredible. Because all they cared about is that their princess was sick and that they were helping their princess out. So it just meant so much to me that they were like, oh, if we've been fooled, well, in that case, you're screwed. We are going to fight. Um, They're such good little dudes. And I was so... Uh, the Samurai of Wano, the evening shower, Conjuro, is so cool. There is a long history of characters in anime who have the ability to draw stuff into reality. And I've never seen the bit done before where they're bad at art. So it just all of the things they make just aren't very good. It was so cool to have them to have them be a shitty drawer made it so much better. Like when they drew the bird at first and they're like, oh, my God, you're able to do that. And they're like, yeah, but the bird is so badly drawn that it can't even get people up. And I was like, it's just the most amazing bit. And then when you saw him draw them all uh, ladders out, and they were shitty, and everyone was trying to climb out, I was like, God, this joke cannot people, get it. People using badly drawn props to try to escape is so good. It's like, the, it's like Oda has 
if someone's tried to help out out by being like, I need to help these characters and drawn little help into the comic, but they're a bad oh. artist. Yeah, thank you a ton, Samurai. Jeez, these are so crooked. I can barely climb. Stifle your impertinent mewlings. <laughs> Great. And that bird, that whack bird is fantastic. I love him. I want to give him a name. They didn't give him a name. His name is Carl now. Um, the princess is a Muji is so cute. Wait, I can hear her quiet. For you, for us, it, for the translation I got, it was Mancheri. Oh, I got Muji. M O U J I. Muji. Huh. I can't believe the very first time that I um, see any of the Straw Hats get physical with somebody, it's to do the weird thing where Frankie decides to um, dislodge the Smile Factory manager, Queen. Uh, by giving her a kiss and then she's unable to think after that moment and just becomes a useless thing on the side but the good thing that comes out of that is the manliest fight in the history of manliness i love uh, their manly fight of you're not allowed to block or dodge it's just taking turns yeah. oh they're so hard boiled i ain't letting you destroy the factory if you're a man's man prove it with your fist a real man's fight is about to begin. Diaper bombs, nipple light special. <laughs> <laughs> it, this fight, it, when we do our One Piece and gender stream, this fight is coming up for sure. Oh, so good. Because this is absolutely a parody it. of over the top masculinity. The nipple lights are very oh, dangerous. Has started. Oh, we have a level one hype train. Thank you, everybody. That was my very favorite fight, I think, in the entire thing. We've got some wicked fights, and here I it's am, good. like, Diaper Bond and Nipple Light is my very favorite. The king, who's supposedly such a great guy, the first king, had a punishment room where he put Viola or Violet? I somehow missed that fact. She's like, where is the princess? Where is the Tontata princess, Man Sherry, being held? And... She's looking, where is she? It must be a place I haven't checked in years. And then she goes all through the thing, and all of a sudden she says, I've spotted her at last. And then they're like, where is Mancherry? I found her in the palace. She's in the punishment room. She's in a small room behind the chapel. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, the punishment room. What? Yes, and indeed, it is a room where Lady Viola um, gets put when she's been bad. Oh, that, so that's a now thing, not a back in the day thing. No, that's it's a, a back in the day thing. She's a little girl. Oh, well, in that case, um, probably just a timeout room. Um, you need to see it and remember, but let's just go into it. It says, when we visited the palace and we played pranks with Lady Viola, King Raikou would punish us by sending us to that room. And then Lady Scarlet would come. Did you get scolded again? You guys never learn. It wasn't me, sister. I didn't break the plate. It was Leo and them. Lady Viola said that we could break them. I said you could touch them. Mm -hmm. I'll go and apologize with you later. Here's some fruit. And then they're in a, like, quiet, dark room <laughs> with bars on the windows, and they're all being held in there. This is, you know, this is time out. Uh-huh. This is a normal time out. Are you claiming that that's what your childhood was like? Yeah, I think if you were royalty, you would have sent us to, like, just some not used old guest room in our castle for timeouts. Alone in a room that you could lock that had all, like, brick walls? I don't think so. Okay, there is the cutest freaking made my heart so happy moment here when okay. dude has to turn around and says go ahead and use him mr luffy and then he turns around backwards and and cavendish is like why are you facing in that direction and then luffy is like wow this is a huge help thank you mr roosterhead thank me no thank you for being born <laughs> crying and he's like now i can jump straight up to the top and law's like just do it already and they start running up there and and uh he's down at the bottom and he goes don't worry you got this <laughs> he screams up to him and he goes there's a limit to how much a barrier surface i could deploy at once and i used it all on the stairs but it's better this way i'd be happy to die for mr luffy's sake 
Mm. And then Cavendish is like, oh my god, you were such a handful. But then Robin says, I understand how you feel, Rooster. Our captain is worth the risk of our lives. <laughs> That's so sweet. And then she I says mean... under that, she says right under that, in every situation, Luffy is the trump card that can lead us all to victory. Mm. And then she stands there and goes, Gigantus Mano! And her huge hands come up. And I was just like, oh. my heart almost melted in a way I can't even express. The fight between Fujitora and Sabo was so, so fantastic. Admiral epic. versus second in command of the revolutionaries. Oh, so epic. And it was also so epic because we got to see that with his new ability, like because clearly Sabo has a massive amount of training behind him. I really love that they put sunflowers all around here. And I wondered whether or not the sunflowers were a thing that had been planted before or were planted by people after because um, sunflowers have like deep meaning all over the entire world, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it, sunflowers also have the ability to take poison out of the ground and to rid an area of toxins. And I like to think about all the things that happened to that kingdom after the king was forced to cut down his people. But the other thing is, is that um, sunflowers are associated with, you know, positive happiness, vibrancy, and sunshine, obviously, like Luffy. But um, they also represent the bright, uh, positive energy, prosperity. But weirdly, the sunflowers represent unity and are a common tradition for talking about standing up for rights and unification because they are single flowers all standing above um, the darkness and anger below. So there's this idea that the soil beneath has been tampered with by years and years of fighting. And then the sunflowers grow out of toxic soil. Sunflowers don't need good soil to grow. And so they grow out of the toxic soil. And yeah, Luffy shirt is also sunflowers. And then they stand above the toxicity. They clean the ground and turn it back into good soil and good times. And it's meant to also be a symbol of um unity standing up for what you believe in and the sunflower single petals the whole way around which is why they say that it's because each individual is important in your society and together you create the light as one and so when i saw a sunflower field in it growing beside the area i thought about how they are trying to grow unity and strength as a representation out of all of the bad things that had happened in this area and then Luffy is also wearing a sunflower shirt. And I was like, mm, could be reading into this. And then I was like, no, because I remember the Japanese girl who was in my class. And when I asked people to choose one flower that would represent their character when we were doing character analysis, she was like, how am I going to choose just one flower? And she was like, you know, they, they have all these aspects, which would be all these flowers. And it was just commonplace for her. She said, yeah, in Japan, we all know the different meanings of flowers. Like it's kind of a thing we do. So I was like, I can see, I can see him choosing the sunflower intentionally for that reason. Um, yeah, and then the sunflowers also do always face the sun. They move throughout the day. When I was in Germany and Switzerland and riding my bike through the countryside, I got to see all the sunflowers movement because later on in the day when we went home, they were all facing in a different direction. It was pretty cool. Okay, I am moving forward. Okay, this was one of my very favorite parts, and it makes everybody so happy in their heart because they love God Usopp, but ugh, could Usopp's sniper be any cooler? You watch frickin' Sugar come out, and Sugar sucks with, speaking of suns, with the light of a million suns. It took me ten long years to make thousands upon thousands of little toy slaves. And in one instant, all of my hard work is undone. Revenge will be simple. Just a brush of my hand, and it will be as though you never existed. Um, and then, here is what's interesting. She villained too hard. She did the slow walk, and she was like, let me just slow walk up to you rather than just running over and smacking you with my hand. 
To be fair, um, she's in the body of like an eight-year-old child. I feel like an eight-year-old running at someone's just way too. Oh, Luffy might not react anyway. So oh, she's ten. Okay. She's ten. Plus, it's Luffy. He could have yeah. run around, and he would have been Never like, "Never mind." Oh, Luffy's not suspicious of anything. No. And then Usopp's. Do you understand the severity of the situation? Just a few minutes ago, I got chills down my back when I realized that Robin had been a toy, meaning that I never even knew that I'd forgotten her. If Sugar touches him, we'll even forget about Luffy. I can't stand the idea that our comrades could disappear, and we would never know it. We have got to stop her. And then using this, his skills and the drawing and using um, Viola's sight and her ability to um, see what's taking place. And then seeing the design that he created, that all of a sudden when he lets it go, though, he goes, here it goes, super grown up, great black kabuto. You're not going to get away with this. And then he goes, what's this? I can see their spirit. <gasps> Boom! Our baby has got himself some hockey. Let's go, Usopp! If we're going back to the theory that we brought up before, that observation hockey is how you see people, Usopp seeing people's spirit makes so much sense. 100%. Like, percent. Like, not as in ghost, as in, like, seeing their, the, like, you know, their spirit, their character, their, their, what makes them who they are. Exactly. And so Usopp having this type of observation yeah. hockey, too. The ability for him to see their spirit come on. That's an incredible ability, especially if you are a person who is a sniper. But be lest I forget, one of the coolest lines in this um, that I almost went by and bigger coded. <sighs> ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Oh. Is when he said this, I don't care about the details. They're not answering their snails and we don't have time. I'm a sniper and backup is where I shine. I shoot down the enemy by surprise to protect my people. Oh. I He uh -huh. goes into detail here about how he doesn't care about credit or glory this time. And he's yeah. doing what he's doing just to protect his captain. And I love it. Because this is yeah. a crew about, this is a story, These this saga, again, all the way from the return to Sabaody up to here, everything has been about how you choose who you're loyal to and what you do for them. And this exactly. is him choosing selflessly to just fight for his captain. Exactly. It was unbelievable. And um, everyone fought to protect him. And when everyone came to the top, oh, first of all, let's just say, everyone comes to the top and they pull him down. But then he goes, um, the targeters be on the walls. If I miss, Luffy is gone. Guess what, Luffy? I don't want to hit the seas without you, man. Who else is going to save this kingdom? Here it goes. And then he sends it off. And I love how it goes in, um, one, a breeze from the west to the east. Wind speed is four. A slight tailwind, two. And then it shows first booster, exploding star. Projectile rises, rear end detaches, three. And it literally shows the different pieces of his weaponry that he's created, breaking down, extra booster, wrapper falls away, projectile flies horizontal. Like he took, he took the wind speed, the direction, the everything, and he put it all into his calculations and sends it off. And then he doesn't even get, it doesn't have to hit. It's just meant to reawaken the trauma. And I was like, holy shit, man. Like, that even Usopp is like, even me at this distance, I don't think I can hit. So I need a weapon that just needs to get near her. Exactly. That was unbelievable. And then she goes, that was unbelievable, Usopp. How did you manage that? You're incredible. You defeated Sugar. Oh my god. And then when the people get to the top, the exact same thing that we were talking about before, that idea of loyalty, because they get up there, they think they're just going to attack and pull them down. And they see their king and their king is protecting Usopp and they're standing there. And then all of a sudden they're like, no, no, tell us what to do. Tell us how to do this. And, and they just go right back to their faith in their king. And they realize like, 
we have been traumatized. We have been forced to kill people that we cared about. We have been forced to run around and and kill people that we loved and be controlled. We understand that you were, we were wrong. Tell us what to do. And then what does the king say? I have faith in Luffy. Ugh. God, that's so good. It's so good. Yeah. I like to that when Luffy gets to the top and he sees um Don't Flamingo and he sees that Don't Flamingo has Bellamy, then he just immediately goes into the protection of a Bellamy. And Don't Flamingo can't even imagine it. Like he can't even imagine this idea that somebody like Luffy would spend his time wasted on protecting somebody like Bellamy. And he's like, the two of you fought against each other. He tried to kill you. And this is where Luffy is like, yeah, no, I don't care about the past. Let Bellamy go. And it was just like, we're friends now. We're who we are now. I don't care about who he was. We are friends. Let him go. I love and that I thought Luffy that was... can see growth in Bellamy, even if Bellamy doesn't see that growth because he's stuck with Doflamingo. Exactly. And this is what I was trying to talk about with Sabo. Like, it's fine. And I hope it changes with Sabo. But Luffy is so able to see change in people. He, he can see somebody be who they were, were, and then they grow and they change and they show Luffy that there's more to them than they even know that they have in themselves. And Luffy is like, no, I can see who you are. I see you. And I know that you've changed. And I know who you've become. So be that person. And so I think that's why for me, this, it was such a difference between, because I had the foil of Luffy Saying to Bellamy, you're wrong. I know who you are now and you've changed. And Sabo saying Luffy hasn't changed at all. And that's what for me was like a big, ooh, that's weird. I hope that doesn't continue in the future. I felt so bad for I, Luffy when he, I think when he is, kicked Bellamy in the face. Yep. Yeah, I think this is going to be one of those things, by the way, where it is going to pick up a lot of flack that you are bothered so much by this one line and people are going to be get, coming you at, at you for it, but I think it's fair to dislike it. It comes across as innocuous to me, but I get not liking it. But also, I think people underestimate character development in One Piece a lot, and I've talked to you about this before, and it's because it's subtle character development. It's like very small things that if you're not paying attention to subtext, you don't notice because like it, the change that the characters go through aren't spelled out they don't tell you oh you grew because you did this thing you do have to put the pieces together to see character development in one piece they don't yeah. tell you how the characters change ever they don't tell you the difference between Usopp being like how can i live up to my friends if i don't do this in previous arcs to him in this arc saying how can i live up to how can i live up to myself how can i look at myself if i don't do this I completely agree. And n not only that, like, I'm okay with people being pissed off if I'm reading into a line because I'm not reading into it. All I'm doing is looking at it and wondering. Like, I'm wondering, is this going to be how... Is this going to be how Sappho has a relationship with his brother now? Right? Like, when you hear that, I think as a reader, am I being told... And I don't know, because I haven't got there yet. But I wonder, am I being told that this is going to be the way he sees it? And I guess the reason it bothered me is because I see Luffy constantly noticing when people change. And constantly having faith in people to be even better than they were. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that's what Sabo ends up feeling about Luffy. And so I just hope that that's what their relationship ends up being in the end. That is all. Um, what you just did, promise me, Straw Hat, letting your anger and hatred control you is just what the enemy wants. Control it. Provoking you is exactly what he's good at. Which is an understatement because he puppeteers people. Yeah. Right? So... He's literally trying to puppet people. So that's a controlling of the emotion. So if he can get your emotion and control your body, both, perfect for him. Um, I even had to call you because 
Did you watch this in anime? Oh, yeah, I got it before then, but I did watch it in anime. The thing is, you also missed that there was fire with Hody Jones, so you weren't ready for it. Yeah, I was like, did I miss that? And you were like, yeah, you did. You missed the fire. I don't think that I noticed that the 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 fire to the extent that I did here, because I didn't read that one in color, whereas in here, Luffy's whole body is surrounded by fire for Red Hawk. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading it in color so you can see the way that the flames dance and everything. I love this idea that they switched places and then he got punched in the face. Well, yeah, Ugh. because Dofi, for all the underestimating he does do, Dofi is fucking aware that if this kid can do anything, it's punch people. He knows yeah. Luffy has punched a lot of people out of their jobs. So Luffy, yeah. but Dofi's like, yeah, this kid can hit. So I'm going to make him fight the copy. I'm in front of Law. I'm fucking fine because like Law, I know his fighting style. I know I can handle this. And as Luffy's about to land Red Hawk, Law shifts who's who and a jet of fire gets punched through Dofi's stomach because he was not ready to take that hit from Luffy. It was so good. That yeah, red the hawk second is so good. Is punched, true. And it really makes you think about, like, I think that Luffy is going to be a sun god, and ha Luffy suddenly getting um, flame abilities and being able to use flame abilities in any way, I think is attached to his, his sun yeah, god abilities. Because he's been in gear second when he's used them. People are thinking it might be the heat of, the, of gear second uh, being channeled into fire has been the popular theory for it just so that you're aware but a lot of people were also like that's insane what why is he on fire yeah i think it's sun god i think what we're seeing is his his sun god abilities coming out because like this person just said i wonder if luffy smells like burning rubber i literally said to myself uh fire is not great for rubber like <laughs> Fire is is famously been something that's not awesome for rubber. And so, yeah. Mama Rock, what do you think of Don Flamingo's father and his willingness? Yeah, we'll look at that in a minute, have her back. Well, so I was yeah. like, not a great thing to suddenly be catching on fire. But if your other ability is as a sun god, then you're going to have to get used to that. Because I think that you are going to heat up and have more and more access to heat and sun and flame. And I think that that would be tragic. And I cannot wait. I want to move forward into the backstory. I could not believe the last little while of this from like 761 to 767 is wild. All the people of the town are trying to kill other people. They're being manipulated. The animals are smashing their heads in. Poor Bellamy is being manipulated. Um, you've got the fight taking place on the top and then boom we go into this oh here okay so let's get the executions underway says dofi starting with you law and then he, he said there's something that doesn't add up you're a former celestial dragon who fell from grace in marejoie how do you still wield the power just this morning you mobilized cp0 into action oh you really want to know before i die yeah do a little villainous backstory it's all it's because I know all about the crucial treasure that exists within the sacred marriagewah and the very knowledge of its existence would shake the world to its foundation. I am very, going... very torn about something here. Okay. Because there is a linguistic clue that Japanese people had that led to theories in the Japanese fan base community that no English speaker had. <clears throat> but it's one of those things where the word can be interpreted multiple ways. And I feel like if I tell you, you may think I am leading you about something. Okay. But there were theories that the Japanese fan base had about this theory. It is the thing that Archer pointed out, because from what I understand, this was a thing the Japanese community had theorized about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's who I learned it from, but uh, supposedly it's a thing in the, in the J original Japanese. The problem what do is, people think? I, I can't look it up. Yeah, the alternate exactly. So what do people think? Do you. I give the alternate meaning of this word for mama or do I not? 
People are saying it's fair. I'm seeing more yes than no. There are no's, but I'm going to go for a yes. Do we do a poll? Let's do a poll. Yes. In the meantime, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Um, okay. And then it shows Kill Don Flamingo, which was such Robin vibes. Hey, the Robin running throughout the world trying to hide while everyone is trying to kill her because she has information. Oh, yeah. Which completely shows this is a normal thing for all the dragons to do is just hunt people down and take them out when they have information that you don't want them having. Mm -hmm. um, By the way, to the them, over when you're right I was the worst kind of fugitive. One with an ace up his sleeve. Once the celestial dragons realized they couldn't kill me, they grew quite cooperative. If only I had the power of the op op fruit in my grasp on that specific day years ago, I would have been able to make use of Marjois's treasures to seize true world power. That so, is how valuable and useful those powers are. So we, you can think about what that means. The alternate translation is not just that it, it could be translated instead as of he knows what the treasure is as he knows who the treasure is. Okay. That is the alternate translation, basically. Who the treasure is. Interesting. Interesting. And can it mean more than one who? Is it able to be pluralized, or is it only a singular who? I think singular because it's either what or who. I think it's interesting that he says, I would have been able to make use of the marriage while treasure to seize true world power. That is how valuable and useful those powers are. Not only for the personality switching surgery, but one even greater ability. The hand skilled enough, blah, blah, blah. So it is the ultimate devil fruit, the ability to have eternal light or the immort immortality operation. Why would the immortality operation be so useful to a person who knows who the treasure is? Would you give immortality oh, to the person? And that's what I was going to say. That's why I'm wondering about the who instead of the what. So I think that that could go either way. There is a fan theory about it, it, but it didn't emerge until quite a bit later. So I'm not going to tell you the fan theory until we get to the point that that theory emerged. And if you come to it first, that'd be crazy. Because I don't think that the treasure then of the dragons could be the who the treasure is and have it be Luffy because Luffy wouldn't be a treasure. And if it was a what? All right, I'm going to play with that a little bit later because you shouldn't be playing with things when your brain isn't smart. But my brain will be smart <laughs> soon again. And then when my brain is smart again. Someday soon, smart brain coming to a theater near you. Now I'll have smart brain again tonight. My tummy just feels unhappy. Um... Hmm. You've just kind of blown my world wide open. <laughs> I mean, you could just you could just sit with that, come back to it. Law's backstory is so crushing. It's so sad in so many ways. I mean, it's the ultimate straw hat backstory. He has all of them mixed together. He has all of the sads at the same time. It is absolutely crushing to have his entire nation be taken out to be treated like pariah, as if he has um, as if he has a flesh-eating bacteria that he's moving. He was like the Ebola virus on the move. It made me so sad. But it was amazing because I I haven't even been with Corazon that long where no, I am. you just have this backstory with him. Yeah, like I've literally only had this little bit of backstory. And while I have this backstory, I just fell in love with Corazon. He became one of my very favorite characters of all time. The ability to have the quietness and to shut things down, the whole backstory of him not talking to Law when he came back, the idea that, or not talking to his brother when he came back, the idea that Doflamingo was such a piece of shit that he killed his father and took his head to the freaking dragons as if the dragons were going to be like oh yeah well there you go you killed one of us for sure let's bring you back in so the idea of hunting hunting uh dofi down made me really happy like of course they're gonna hunt you down you dumbass you're dangerous you killed your father you're not exactly something they're looking forward to but you do know their secret so the fact that you had Cora get picked up and cared by somebody which is 
absolutely happens over and over again um, where somebody who isn't the parent picks up somebody and helps them out because the same thing happens to law through Korra as with Korra with uh, Buddha. Buddha takes in Korra and is like, I will help you. And then when he goes back, he becomes this valuable and useful tool Suddenly for them. Makes Sengoku a lot less of a shit person to see that he has this know, caring side. It's so hard because you've got him protecting... And so you think that he would have more compassion for Garp when Law was up there, you know? Yeah. But he raised Rosie to do the right thing and be on the right side. He was only ever undercover. I, yeah, and you understand that. But if from the outside world, he does tons of things that are inappropriate and has to act in a way that isn't value added. And yet, then Buddha sticks law Oops. or sticks ace up there and is like oh don't know what to tell you looks like your dude is going to be killed and what uh, had what had ace done up to that point that was so worth many, killing him so many characters in one piece are so morally complicated like sengoku isn't a clearly great person but he's also not a terrible person like he is a man with virtues okay but name the thing that that ace had done that was worth killing him I mean, literally to Sengoku, be a pirate. Yeah, but so was Korra. But Korra was a fake pirate, and he knew that. Ace was not a fake pirate. He doesn't know. He doesn't know all the things going on. He doesn't know what Ace is doing or not doing. But I think that's only what's has brilliant his own about... Own person knowledge. That's what's brilliant about Oda's writing, that you don't know. If you treat pirate as meaning pirate as meaning bad, you have this flat ethical system your virtue based ethics limit your ability to think where a fake pirate is a fake pirate if they've gone through the right channels not some pirates do bad things and are enemies and some pirates do good things and aren't like it is as simple as if you do not swear fealty to the world government you are a bad person because we can't which have is interesting order. because cora would have been responsible for killing marines as well yep Korra would have been responsible be for murder. Korra would have been responsible for all sorts of terrible things in order to have been in this position and not have been found out. Yep. It's it's and a so really it's morally just, complicated thing. It's a very, and that's what I was going to say, that is a morally gray area. And yeah, Luffy also kills Marines. Like, but we haven't seen I it can... on screen, but those people he kicked into the pit in any lobby are not alive. Yeah, and also... Like, I could see, I could see um, Buddha saying, like, yeah, let's kill Luffy after what happened in Eni's lobby, after what happened in so many places, actually. Like, I just have to name them all. Eni's lobby, so I, impel down, there are so many people dead because of the people he freed from that prison. Exactly, exactly. Like, there are civilians so in One Piece who that. were dead because of Luffy's actions on that day, and we can't ignore 100%. that. Like, that's, that's part of this. Luffy didn't kill people, civilians directly, ever debating depending on like if there were civilians around oh we're in an ad break let's take it actually no this is fine this isn't like the most so that was thing. my point this person yeah. is also helping to make part of my point where they said i wonder if he got leeway because he was a dragon yeah and that was my point is because what did law do other than be the son of roger that's what law did so yeah. you were saying being the son of roger was the thing that earned you death Whereas yep. apparently being the son of the dragon, ad, uh, a dragon is the thing that earns you life. It's it's so interesting. I, I mean, think this obviously. shows Sengoku as a caring, compassionate person, despite his virtue ethics, making him do things and commit to course of actions that aren't actually good. It's why I think Oda is a lot closer to utilitarian ethics than virtue ethics, because you see people who want to be good people doing bad things for their virtues. Yeah, but but I also, also just show characters likes, on our side who are virtue ethicists like Sanji. I also think he just likes to write complicated characters and that he's willing to do things that are just ridiculous because I don't know if he just necessarily agrees yeah. with some of the shit that his character does or if he just says to himself, doing this makes for a more interesting character. You're right that Korra was just a kid, but but I think that's the thing, that because, because Sengoku is a virtue ethicist, Someone who joins the Marines goes through this project called Sword and becomes a secret pirate doing secret piracy. That's allowed and okay because they know about it and we can excuse their crimes. Whereas 
we can't look at the good Luffy does for the world in overthrowing people like Crocodile who are doing bad and call him a good person as a Marine because we have this hardline belief that if you call yourself a pirate, you're a bad guy. Uh, and I think it's that's very interesting. Aura calls himself a pirate. Mm -hmm. But as far as the he world calls himself a pirate by going through the right channel. I think Buddha used Korra and just developed some feelings about him like a pet. But even I more still than think it doesn't show. I still think this shows uh, Sengoku is a morally complicated person. I don't think he's a straightforward oh, bad 100%. guy. Oh, hundred percent. He's a very morally complicated person. Like I think he genuinely always thinks he's doing the right thing and is thinking big picture when he does things that are wrong. I just think Oda is also showing Ace us that when we think. It? I just think that Oda is showing us with him that when we Oof. think in black and white, we limit our moral thinking. I would agree that he likes he he likes to make complicated characters that you can neither fully accept or you can neither fully defend them or fully hate them. And Law's history is so so brutal, and the history of his town and oh. Yep. Do we want to read Cricket's speech? And Cricket, do you want to send that to Mama real quick? Yes, yeah. I would, but I realize I'm drawing, so it is easier to ask. Okay. Here it is, Cricket Bones. This nope. is Cricket Bones, our editor writing about Horasan. The thing that really gets me about Rosanente is his change of heart about the child he saves. Saved is an important note because originally that was not his plan. This is an arc about change after all. Rothy's plan was completely different originally, only wanting to stop Law as to save others from Law. He instantly states how much less he hates his brother, then compares Law to him, telling him of the evils and the rotten deeds that could come of it. He grabs Law haphazardly, taking him away against his will and forcing him to go to the doctors that clearly upset and traumatize him. This continues on for a while until the realization begins to sink in for Razanati, this is just a child. This is a child. A child that has been branded like his siblings by his own hand instead of realizing what he truthfully is. A scared kid like he was. Just like he was. But nobody saved Law in the rubble. Nobody came for him. Razanati was lucky in that sense, wasn't he? We see him weep for the child now, realizing what his poor boy is going through. The actions of his own doing, hitting him like a truck. And Law hears the man who once hurt and towered over him, weeping for him, and he weeps too. Their relationship changes. He carries Law like his bird's sake, a black swan with its gray signet cradled in his black feathers lovingly. Law begins to bond with him too, both parties opening up and realizing how human they can be together with one another. Rosanetti chooses kindness and unorthodox love versus his marine training and treatment and looks at almost instant change in the child's demeanor and in his too. There is a panel of him during his final moments, staring into the sky with blank eyes and his mouth slightly ajar. That is a realization on what is about to happen, on what tragedy he will be a part of, and what law will have to deal with. He then turns to his son, his shining golden son, and he states the following. I stand aside. Which is not a usual way of saying I love you. It is something hardly anyone says. It's the deepest kind of love a person in Japan can say. It's the most powerful way of stating admiration, and it is hardly ever used. I love you, Ra. At the end of his life, standing before and in front of the child who screams and cries mutely for his father, the black swan stands, and he calls out his final realization in the flurry of bullets that soon rack him, Doflamingo coldly shooting his own Corazon. Law is free. Not everyone is free from the demon. As the Marines wanted, not people are free from you, but Law is free. Free to choose kindness, free to be horrid, he can do anything he wants, but Razanade planted that seed of kindness instead of forcing it like he tried to originally. He changed from pressuring forces as the Marines often do, a heavy-handed goodness into letting the child choose for himself, choose whatever life he wanted, good or bad. A dragon died for a D by another dragon's still hand. His crimson shades, rose-colored, can't see the flames and blood pooling in the snow. It's just him now, and his Corazon bleeds away. With a smile, the sun sinks, and Corazon bleeds out. A child weeps for the golden warmth, a tragedy, but he is free. Go, Law. 
onwards to the sea. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful, Cricket. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody who subbed. Oh my God, that was so many. And when I was watching this part and he goes in and goes through all that hell to get Law his devil fruit and, and manages to eke it out, one of the pieces that I sent you that I thought was absolutely like heartbreaking is when Hora looks at Law as he's putting him inside of the trunk and about to put a silencing on him and gives him the gives him the two finger symbol and says and smiles at him. I want you to remember my smile. I want you to remember me smiling. And I was like, God damn. Even in all the hellishness that he knows that Law is about to go through and for everything that he had been in he makes sure that his final moments are him seeing him smiling because he wanted him to know you mean so much to me. You've brought joy to my life. Protecting you is happiness for me. And I think that was one of the reasons that at the end, when he put him inside and they have that moment together that I was so broken by it. It's like, it's exactly like um, Cricket was saying, like you're, you're watching him know that he has just made this relationship with law and law has become his child and he's grown to have all this deep love for him and he knows what he's going to have to do in the rest of his life and that he's going to be alone and have to find his own tribe but it's really important to him that when he goes that he gets to see that the last thing he sees of him is him smiling and making this choice so he knows dude you brought me joy I'm smiling because I get to protect you. I'm smiling because I had that opportunity to do for you what I didn't have. And I want you to know I'm going willingly. And it just is, it's exactly what Cricket says. Because it goes, calm. He gives him calm and touches his head. Now any noise that you create will be silenced. Slip away when you can and we'll meet up again at the next town. Hey, Law. And he puts two fingers up and goes, I love you and smiles and shuts it. And so it was such a huge deal because there is no way now that Law doesn't know that the choice that he made was his own choice and he made that choice because he was loved. And it it rewrites Law's path and it changes him from being somebody who's filled with anger and hatred and who's believes that there can't be any good into this world to remember that there can be good in this world and people can care for you which is why on the other side I saw Luffy as the second half of that healing because he saw somebody take on the role of a parent and love him and he could think to himself yes parents can have love and they can learn to love you and they can care for you but then Luffy showed him friendship can be love too and friendship can lay its life down for you and that's why I really felt like Luffy was the second side of the same train of helping to heal Law's heart. And between Korra and Luffy, I, I really hope I get to see the um, change in who Law becomes and the direction of his decisions. Aww. I love that. Kid. The, the other one I loved was just let him go. He is free. Healing. Healing. Can we, can we can we do this right? Can we do this right now before we finish up and head into closing segments? Can we go through like I want to come up with 10 iconic looking panels from this section going back and forth? Yes and no. Can I can I look at a couple of things first? Yeah, totally. I, I'll put a bookmark in that. Okay. Uh it, I was just going through this with you beforehand, and I just found it shocking how many iconic moments happen in this little section. So I was wondering about, like, can the magic circles be used for travel by the government? Or yeah, um, is that one of the ways that they have quick movement or create easy sea routes? Um, is using the magic circles? Are the magic circles holding the red line and all the pieces together? I'm, I'm starting to think it's time to go back into magic circle land. Um, all the magic circles pull you back in. Yeah, because I started to think about all the different angel people, all the people with wings, and then the dragons. Yeah, you had a I'm... thought based off of the angel symbology on the moon that there might have that been 
a wind. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm starting to think that the angel people might have been some of the people who were in charge, or they were the real gods, which is why they have wings and why they look like angels. Mm, winged and angel then, gods in the past. And then the people who call themselves dragons took over for them and and threw the gods to the ground. And I started to wonder, like, where does Luffy fall within that equation? Is he a dragon? Is he, or is he an angel? Is he the enemy of dragons? Um, or is he a different side of the same coin? But now I'm wondering about those angels um, and whether they were actually the original gods. Hello, yeah, YouTube. I am Hello, glad YouTube. to see you here. Be glad it to see you is here. me, Mama Drock, and Mama over Drock. there we have Drock. That's, a That's who I am. That, that is who he is. If you have made it this far in, press like. Do it's it. It's time to press like Come right on. now. Fucking Get dare you. <laughs> I bet you can't. Why not? You're here anyways. You obviously liked it. Otherwise, you wouldn't still be here. Yeah, Just clearly if you're not hitting like, like, it's because you're too weak to hit the like button. Yeah. Oh, wait. What if their fingers are broken? Use your nose. What if your nose is broken? Good question. Use your elbow. Hopefully it's pointy. What about if that doesn't work? Grab a pencil, put it between your teeth, and touch it onto the like button. I now gotta you be got honest, that. At a certain point, if enough things are broken that none of these are working for you, you're using like a display that's tracking your eyes anyways, and you can press the like button. This is not a lie. Unless it's your first time with that. And, then... and, and, and you know what? Maybe the precision's a little hard, in which case I will forgive you for not hitting the like button. If you're Fine. new to using the thing that lets you're you control the screen with your eye, you're forgiven. I like how many people say hi to themselves in the bar over here, by the way. <laughs> it's very good. I love it. It's always <laughs> wild. Um, so once you press like, go in and subscribe uh, and press the bell so that you get things. Or don't. You know what? Don't support us. It's fine. Whatever. I mean, like, you know, you don't have to. Somebody said, though, apparently, and I didn't know this, that we would never make it to 20,000, and we almost no, no, are. No, not 20,000. 20, no, no, they, they said 50. Or No, wait, you're right. They said you'll never make it no, to 20, let you'll alone You'll never 50. make it 20, let alone yeah, 50. So I we're forgot. almost at 20,000. So please Guys, do right. me a favor. Let's prove that person wrong. Subscribe and prove them wrong, because they aren't a squishy they're a That's clunky. not a squishy. You're, you're not a prove, squishy when you say we'll never make it to 20,000. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Be a squishy and prove the clunky wrong. That's all we're I have gonna to say. We're going to press a like that. button. We said not to, so you won't now. Well, we said maybe. It's your choice, but also you should. Or do. Or do. Or, do. or don't. Yeah, subscribe, but subscribe out of spite for the spite. person who said we'd never hit 20. Haruko Witch. We're yes, so close. Your sub subscribe matters at this point. I love the subscribe out of spite. That's what we should have as a thing that flashes across the stream. Subscribe out of spite. <laughs> All right. It's been All really right. good talking to you, YouTube. I hope you have a great day. I hope you squish about the planet and make someone else's day puppies. bright. So um, I started to wonder if the D is actually a thing that is for divinity. And if all the people who are Ds are the actual gods that we're pulling down or whether or not those people are the people with wings. Right, so, so the actual gods like, could be the winged people from or, the ancient hieroglyphics, or the D. Yes, or the D. Do you I'm think trying there was to an decide older which group one. Of gods that was either winged people or the D. Yeah, and but I really feel like the people with the wings that um, I have been underestimating to now that the people with the wings possibly could be the other side of the coin and were the gods, and that the dragons pulled them down. And the dragons don't see themselves as human. And so I started to also wonder, are they actually human? And then when you looked at um, Doflamingo's dad and, and uh, Corzo's dad, he said, we have always been human. And they're like, oh, okay. How um, dare you say that we are people? And so it made me wonder whether or not they were never gods and they took over the position of gods and called themselves gods. But the thing that gives them the power mm -hmm. is the thing that it, that uh, Dofi is talking about. And it makes them feel as if they are godlike when in fact they are not, they are simply human because when he pulled something out of the dad, what was it? The chip he said he needed to pull out of him. Oh boy. I don't remember. Do you remember as he was saying that he, know. that, when Dofi's dad and was saying that he wanted to leave the Celestial Dragons, yeah, the Celestial Dragon ID chip. 
And I wonder no, whether I or not that like links them up to uh, Merjwa so they can find them anywhere, but if it also helps to link them to the power that the celestial dragons have. If it's something as simple as they are tied into some sort of power in Merjwa. That, Interesting. That gives I them... I forgot about the ID chips entirely. That gives them the ability to have powers be beyond what they otherwise would have. But that is the only thing that makes them feel like they are more powerful than everyone else. And in an actuality, they're just human. No, and I started to by wonder... how dense the series is that I can be this obsessed and miss something like an ID chip and just not know. Just that disappears. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And then with, with Eminem, as I was talking to Drock and he was saying, yeah, you were looking at Eminem's back and he has scars from where Eminem pulled his own wings yeah, out. Because so you said you wondered if he was a god or something like the Celestial Dragons, but then I was like, yeah, but they're all humans and he clearly plucked wings off of his back. And, and he then plucked said, his wings off of his back. And so then I said, well, then it's possible that he is the one from the original gods. And he's not wrong. He is a god. But he was... Um, torn down by the people who are now in control. And then I wondered, okay, who, what is the thing that gave them power? Um, because now I'm starting to wonder whether or not the winged dudes are the ones who are actually the original gods and that the sneaky little bastards up in Merjwa are the ones who took over from them. And then the people who are D are going to be the thing that put the winged, the winged beings back into a heavenly spot. And so I have to start thinking about that more. Um, and then I put down here, yeah, because Luffy is going to activate all the powers within the Ds. Um, the battle, I, no, I don't want to talk about it. Um, yeah, okay. But then in all of the different um, panels for the beginning of the chapters, you have this thing where the kitty cats, I don't know who remembers this or not, but the kitty cat, the lost kitten's it's home Jimbe's... was taken away. First night of the and, sea, Jimbei's adventures. And the solitary whatever. journey of Jimbei, he finds that um, wild animals from the ground have come up onto the shore and have been attacking people on shore. And the cat's entire village has been taken and pulled up. And then while he's there, in volume 15, um, he says, I definitely saw that the ruins fall just now. So the ruins from under the water were attempted to be pulled out, which made me think about what is it called when they went up to Skypea? The the knockup stream. A knockup stream, which definitely made me feel like the, something like the knockup stream tried to take the cat's whole home and get it somewhere where they wouldn't see things or things would be taken away. Because now that we have the Noah uh, the the ark down underneath, and more people are making friends with the fishmen. And I started to say, like, yeah, they wouldn't want them to be friends with the fishmen because you'd want to make the fishmen seem um, less than human, less important and not even human, because then you wouldn't listen to them. And under the water, you have evidence of the missing hundred years. You have evidence of um, how the dragons pulled down the real gods. And you have evidence of all the things that were done underwater, which we know because the pont glyphs are there. Uh, Roger went down etc cetera, etc cetera, and they can't they don't have the power to go under the water apparently and deal with things so it feels like the knock up stream was used and tried to take away the whole kitty cat's entire village and then it didn't fully work because when you look on the shore things are falling down out of the sky so it makes you wonder if whether the knock up stream couldn't scoop up the entire village and so some of it falls off and falls back down to earth and so it i'm just now being like okay did they try to get rid of evidence from under the water and get rid of it? Ugh, I feel like maybe they did. Now, uh, guys, making the box brown just ruins composition. I think I think it has to be simple inside the law zone. I think it makes sense that uh, since you already have a theory that knockup stream was used to get rid of Shandia, that it could be used to get rid of the kitty cat village if it had a poneglyph. I think that it looks like it may have. Yeah, so the villagers are on the front of a bunch of them and Jimbe is going around and having like a solitary adventure and the cat is without its home and then they find out that the home, all of a sudden some of the home starts to fall out of the sky and ruins land back down and you can see 
houses under the ruins that were crushed, and other pieces of the village that may have fallen as well. You can think of the secret that Dr. Cray's youth and immortality surgery from the opium. Op- no, I don't think so. I don't think you got, so. You just got a crazy too. skincare routine is all. The ruin and stuff was underwater, Paladin Berserker. If you go back to all the beginning of the chapter, starting, um, I think it's at chapter 761 or 762, you'll see that the cat the cat is lost and can't find its home. Jim Bay sees it. Um, they're in the middle of trying to find its home. And then they see a place where it used to be. And this dog who's a police officer is like, this is my home, but there's nothing else around it. They see a boat that was sinking. They bring it back up to the surface. They find out in the newspaper that, um, uh, what are the big beasts called again who are underwater? Sea kings? The Neptunians? The either Neptunians, or? The Neptunians um, had been um, raiding onto the shores. And they were like, what the hell? And then all of a sudden, while Jimbe is up there and they're trying to figure things out, boom. A ruin falls out of the sky from above, and there's like a stream of water coming and falling down with it, which makes me think that um, something similar to the knock-up stream was used and tried to take it out. But I imagine what happened then is it would lose power and velocity coming out from underneath water, and only some of it would have been able to come up, and they wouldn't have had as good of control, and then some of it falls down again. That's what I imagine could be one of the things that is happening. Anyways... Look at the cover stories for all the different chapters and you can see it too. It's very interesting. But when the thing, the ruins fall back down onto Earth, and there's also a bunch of crushed and sinking oh. boats along the shore. What did you think of uh, our good friend Caribou being taken by, or being assaulted by Diaz Drake and taken by him at the end of his cover story? I don't like it because Caribou has information that I don't want anyone to have. Uh, who could, well, you don't know who Diaz Drake is working for. Come on. What? Drake is... I think Drake is a dangerous kid. Okay. And I'm thinking that Drake getting information about um, our girl underwater is not going to be good. Caribou has so much information. It's crazy. Like, Like, Caribou has way too much information. And so I'm kind of freaking out about Drake getting Caribou. I wanted... I wanted freaking Caribou to die so bad, but we knew he wasn't because... Yeah, I was glad that he wasn't given to Kid. Like, I will say, that would have been bad. all of the supernovas he could end up with, Kid would be worse. Yeah, Kid would be way worse. Um, But I was still kind of worried about that. Uh, Eminem, a fallen dragon, ripped wings, where the dragons once believed they're still totally thought bred out of them. Yeah, then I wondered, are they actual dragons or was it bred out of them? Or were they ever dragons? Is it a lie? Who or the were they knows? ever dragons and it's a lie? Yeah. Yeah, you've raised all of these queries before. Yeah, I just, there's so much going on in this arc. We have a special closing segment that I want to do, what are which you doing? is uh, trying to come up with 10 iconic feeling panels from this arc because whole, or this section, because holy fuck, I'm just blown away by how many there are. I want to start with very simple uh which is oh god brain froze right there usopp 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 yeah you start usopp firing the slingshot my There's first one. one is usopp slingshot fire that was yeah. the other one that Mine, i thought usopp would have been a good held one. up by the giant in Night cross death. pose oh the story has totally shifted since the time skip because now we know what is um real and what is what is less likely like you know how the magic system works and the way it works is it doesn't everything has to be explainable yep it's it's a different story than pre-time skip, and I don't. A lot of people don't like it as much. I feel like it's just as good, in my opinion, if not better, because my favorite arc has yet to come. But it's very different. The story's about the world in such a huge way. Uh, um, another panel it. would be Sugar pushing um, Usopp down and say, "And end your sorry life," and then both of them the, becoming flamed. The, the the fucking scream. Yep, that's absolutely. 100% iconic. Sabo destroying the ring is so fucking... That panel is crazy. Seen Sabo destroying a ring. Yeah. Uh, what do you have next? We're at four. Um, what about just the freaking um, birdcage happening? The birdcage? <laughs> that's just crazy. Thing. Yeah. That was wild. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would also oh. say a panel that I would have done in a regular arc would have just been Pika, who sucks at using his own system. 
um, standing up, his full body Very coming out of the shot, soil. Shot. Uh, what's another one? There was one I was thinking of earlier. Oh, Cora with the box. Cora and Law. Law, Law dying. Fantastic. I would agree. Okay, I, look. Yeah. Here's what I'm saying. Um, chapter seven, 765. The mm. Solitary Journey of Jinbei, Night of the Sea, Volume 13. And the townsfolk. Suddenly the ruins destroyed our town, and the creatures wrecked our ships. And the offerings all disappeared. And then it shows different ruins all over the town, and that's just before more fall out of the sky. Oh, okay. So I'm telling you, there's something to the knock-up stream and the Neptunians. No, no, Senor Pink stealing the bikini is not peak iconic. But also, uh, Child Dofi being nailed to a wall absolutely is. And saying he'll kill everyone. And his brother. Yeah, 100%. That is a fucking crazy panel. That immediately feels like it, it, you were just going to remember it for life. We need two more. I think we can do two more. What about the uh, what about the obvious one of Luffy um, using the Red Hawk and punching through? Oh fuck yeah, the Red Hawk blasting through Dofi, a hundred percent. Oh wait, I got one more. Heroes decapitating String Dofi. Yes. Heroes decapitating String Dofi is such a crazy panel. All right, we made it. Ten yes. iconic panels in this section. We added a new closing segment on oh. our Patreon stream, which is our fa your favorite minor character of this section. Yeah, so when we were doing Patreon, we realized, Drock and I realized that there's lots of times that there is a minor character who I would never put in my top five, but is like the coolest character in there. Well, minor character minor is character? harder in this one because there isn't a lot of minor-ish characters. Hate for me is pretty easy. Yeah. Um, it's Rebel. He's so gross. Rebel, as most hated, makes so much sense. He's so disgusting. I think Koala qualifies as a minor character at this point. I think Koala does actually count as a minor character. I think Koala More than and Cavendish. the announcer. Koala, the announcer, and Cavendish, I think, all apply. And they, they are all in contention, I would think. Cavendish is less minor than Koala in this yeah. round. We see Cavendish too much to kind of be, like, really minor. Hondro's I'm going to go with too. Koala is going to be my favorite minor character. All right. I love that. Yeah. Koala wins favorite minor character of this section. Not to mention like how excited we were to see her again and then to get yeah. to have her doing things like that's amazing. Top five. Top five. Oh, wait. Luffy's here. List of Luffy. Where is oh, Luffy? Luffy's here. List of Luffy. Luffy is. Where is our ultra therapist? I think I'm just going to I'm going to put him at S. I think that's fair. It's a yeah. pretty great showing. He did an amazing showing in this uh, arc so far. I think that um, between carrying law through everything and his like crazy, he has inspired enough faith in him and his ability that the king of the realm has decided and um, well, our blind justice boy have both decided to put their faith in him. This is an arc all about where you put your loyalty we have exactly. two people who have a bunch of people that have chosen exactly. them as who to give their loyalty to they ask what to do and those two people say straw put hat is who can fix Luffy. this that's who exactly. i've chosen to trust yeah exactly um, it puts him above other leaders because other people yeah. swear themselves to these people and those people say trust straw hat Exactly. And so when you're thinking about how Luffy is, um, what Luffy is shown and how he creates faith in people to have the leader of the nation and a man whose whole thing is to pull down the seven warlords and who has blind justice and only looks at what justice is, not for all the ways that it falls out, but for what is right. And they both put their faith in Luffy. That's an S tier. It's almost an S plus. It's not quite an S plus, but it's an S tier. I am struggle button because I, I put a bet on who I think you'd put at number one, and we'll see what happens. I am struggle busting because I ad I adore Cora. I think Cora killed it in this realm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Law killed it in this realm, especially since we got to see the background of Law, which. If we're talking about my enjoyment level within here, that's pretty high. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and yet, my number mm. one is Usopp. All right, guys, it's time to gift you guys five subs because Cora did not win number one. And I bet, I get it. This is peak of Usopp. This is, this is so good. This is him I don't think, becoming what he said. How, how can you look at what he did underground? Because don't get me wrong, his, his shot, he wouldn't have been number one without his shot. His snipering Aww. was Salty, that's stunning. So nice. But if you think about what he did underground and having Robin disappear, he doesn't even know that Robin is there. Fan, you hate Usopp? That's interesting. Um, not even knowing that Robin is there, and then he comes back around and and then stands as himself and says, I don't want you to think of me in this way. I want you to remember me as Usopp, and if I die, please erect a uh, statue. And I was like, this is a whole different thing. And then to have him do that shot that he made for Luffy because he couldn't imagine what it would look like to live in a world and be in the ocean without Luffy. That was, I'm sorry, that was just too good. But number two is a hundred percent Cora. Cora, Cora, and, and more Cora. Can I say that I think, like, before we move on from Usopp, I would agree to put Cora with Law. That uh, I think that's fair. Like, can I say that yeah. I think it's important to note for Usopp what you said there about him saying he can't imagine being in the sea without Luffy. We talk about yeah. what you do for the people you swear loyalty with, what they ask of you, and yeah. what you get in return. Usopp gets the person who makes him want to pursue his dream. He wants to be a brave warrior of the sea. He doesn't want to be in the sea without Luffy. You can't exactly. get a better motive. You can't get a better thing than that from your leader, than the person exactly. who makes you want to pursue your dream. It couldn't exactly. be more. Um, and so I think that Cora, it's incredible. funny that you just said that, Ella, because I was going to say, I think that Cora has to be with Law because I think that Law's story only became what it's become because of Cora believing in Law and wanting Law to be fully free. And it's funny because I was going to say that's like Luffy and how he feels about red hair shanks. But I didn't make um, a direct comparison properly until Ella brought it up and I started to think, because I was like, it's similar, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, yeah, actually, no, it's similar way more than that. Like the idea of protecting and caring for them. But Luffy was lucky in that his time with Red Hair Shanks was a little bit more gentle. And but Red Hair Shanks put himself right out there and had his arm taken off, etc. Whereas Korra gave his whole life for law and it's and it's just like the um eternal um surgery because Cora was willing after giving law the devil fruit to then sacrifice his own life so that law could live in freedom i am of the opinion that we don't see something called the immortality surgery in a series without seeing it be used do you well, think because it's going to see done. law use it or do you think Law will have his fruit stolen by someone who uses it, or do you think we'll just see someone who's had it done on them by a previous user? Because one of those has to happen. Yeah, I had this consideration because as soon as they mentioned it, I was like, because it's Chekhov's gun. Once you yeah. bring the gun on stage, you need to use it. Otherwise, why would you mention it? And they mm -hmm. go out of their way to talk about it. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, and my hope is that we're just going to see somebody who's had it used on him and that they won't be the most villainous villain. That would suck. Um, my mm -hmm. fear is that we're going to see Law have to use it. It's so hard to say. Like, I would rather Law not die. Crazy hot take. But like, having that surgery, just having him hold a fruit that can kill you if you choose to. It's so hard to know. Here is something that would both be the saddest and a happy thing, because I have said that I think that Luffy has to die. But it yep. is possible that Luffy might go to die and Law will sacrifice his own life. If that happens, it fulfills the Luffy is supposed to die checkbox and also and allows uses, him fires to fire the gun. 
Damn. Um, so one and two is law together because they have to be together. Um, and then our next one is F my bees. Um, this is a question I had. Yeah. Can I put all of my little guys together as a group, or do I, think I the have to put can, can occupy space? They're pretty small. I think they can fit on the podium together. I think that my little guys are going to take up spot number three together as a whole group. And then I am going to put, and you can't say otherwise. Think about all the different things they do. Think no, about no, how think they came up with, they came up with the plan. They are the ones who are in all directions. They're the ones who are helping everyone. They're the ones who bring Robin and Bardo and everyone up the mountain, Rebecca up the mountain. Um, like everywhere you go, those little guys are together helping to move everything along. Like, in my opinion, they were brave, great kids. Um, Bardo is, uh, number four. Fair enough for Bart. Um, and number five is Robin. Nicole Robin does it again. Have I put her on here a lot? No, I don't think so. I don't think she's actually been on that often. Number three is the collective of the little Tontata. Yeah. Look, no. Frankie didn't make it this week, but guys, there was a lot of characters doing great things. I think it there's an argument so for good. Fujitora. Now, there's an argument for Fujitora. There's an argument for fucking Do Flamingo as a villain. There's a lot of characters you could argue have a place on this, and nobody could include all of them. Oh my god, Cloudy Mad Pie. I did just go in order. That is the first what? time ever. You've never gone in order. I don't even know what to do with myself right now. Sabo could have made it on too, for sure. There's so Sabo could have made it on. So uh, and many. Sabo? Sabo? There's this... Ugh, this arc... It's kicking me. Like, I, I can't even believe how many good moments there are. But I gotta tell you, I just went in order. Now what? Dress Rosa is not my favorite arc, but it is an arc that I love. Like, it's so good and dense with information. And I genuinely think that we've stumbled onto something where if you analyze the Venn diagram of Skypea and uh, Dress Rosa, I think you can find hints about the series for sure. My favorite arc is the final arc of the end of the next saga. Is it too long? Yes. I'll be taking no comments. Okay. Honestly, right the other mega arc of the next saga is in my top five also. I love them so much. I love both of them. Okay, well then I'm going to have to get into my A game. Get it! A game! Okay. Everybody, I hope you have a good one. I hope you enjoy what the world has to offer. Be nice when you're sent on a raid. Um, um, squish on, squishies. I forgot. Yeah, squish on squishies. And until next time, it's been lovely talking to you. Bye.